All right, guys, this is the one you've all been asking for. You've been asking to see a really advanced player get into some really detail, low-level kind of stuff, and that's exactly what we cover today in this lesson. This is not actually a roadshow lesson. Jeff came out to our academy in Colorado and is a very, very good player. I believe he's a four handicap, and you're going to look at his swing at first and be like, oh, he's right on plane. He's got tons of lag. His positions look really good, but then you're going to see as we deep dive into this stuff that we're going to actually tear a lot of his swing apart, especially the core body movements. You're going to hear some things that are going to sound contradictory to what you've hear, heard me do in other lessons, because as you get more advanced, we start fine-tuning things a little bit more. We start looking less at the big picture stuff and start getting into the details, and that's what this lesson really is all about. It's a lot of details that are going to be very, very advanced, but that's what you've been asking for. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this lesson. There's a lot of information. It's a two-hour lesson, and we get into a lot of the core body movement stuff, and you're going to see big changes as we go through this. Well, that's not very common for sure, but we see it. Yeah, Craig's been doing my uh, swing reviews. Well, he is the one who is the expert on being too soft with his wrist. I could never get him to set his wrist forever. Yeah, well, he, but he, uh, what, what's hard for me is I don't know how to not do it. Like, I can look at my swing and know what I think I'm doing wrong, and yeah. I just can't fix it, right? I don't use my, I don't use my lower body right. Kick my, my right leg collapses, and I kick it out, lose my... Lose my posture. <laughs> Usual, right? You've seen it all. Well, geez, you don't need me anymore. You already know what you're doing. Well, I, I know what I'm doing. I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> so, tell me a little bit. So, we know a little bit, obviously, about the wrists and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so, I, uh, I've been playing since I was a kid, right? And homemade swing. Um, I grew up dropping away inside and flipping, right? Um, so, I did a big hook. Started out right hooking. Um, gradually gotten most of that out of my swing over the last five years. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I get behind the ball like this and then I don't get back to it. And so, um, um, I don't really take good divots. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm a decent player. I'm like a two or three. Oh, wow. But I don't hit the ball. Um, you'll see, you'll see what I do. I mean, I just get here and then I get a little behind it like that and then I st and I kick this in, this thing in. That's my move, right, to hit the ball. Yeah. But I never on my I don't get to my left side far enough, fast enough. And I don't use my either of my hips. Yeah. I'm all I'm real heavy in my quads, so my posture tends to when I start making mistakes in posture, it tends to be this. Oh, okay. Lots of knee bend. That's not going to help your shallow angle. Of the no, it's not at all. At all. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So um, it sounds like you're setting yourself up to hit a big hook. So you I am. <laughs> uh, so I got to get you know it's. Um, when I compare when I compare my setup, my normal setup, and I'm better today probably than I was today two days ago, but my normal setup, you know, you guys will be kind of straight here. Yeah. And I'll be kind of like that. Ah, uh, yeah. That's my that's my mistake in my setup. Gotcha. And then I so you'll see it all. All right, cool. Well, let's, <laughs> let me watch it a couple, and okay. then we'll put them on video and get you fixed. That's part of being a man. <laughs> it is in our DNA. I can think about a lot of things, <laughs> but I can't do them. Right, exactly. I can't do them. Uh, yeah, if I can get you to scoot back just to the this way, back just a little bit. Yeah, just for this first shot. Here. So posture-wise, right up front, looks like you're way into that left side, like almost like negative axis to like you're leaned this way. Okay. So your spines. Yep. That typically leads to reverse pivot, but you do a pretty good job of staying there. You, you know, it's kind of interesting. You mentioned to me that you have a tendency to kind of get back here. Uh -huh. You're kind of almost doing the opposite in this. You're actually staying super centered. Your head's moving a minimal amount. And if you look at it from where it was at address, it's barely moved at all. It's almost exactly where it was. If anything, you need to shift more to the right. Yeah, my lower body, for sure, huh? Yeah. 
Your lower body's kind of locked in place. Yeah, it does. I don't, I don't move it either. Wow, yeah, you didn't move it really at all, huh? Uh-uh. Arms and upper body stuff is perfect. Like you're, you're a little bit hiked up with the right shoulder, but you shallow out the club p- perfectly. All this stuff looks good, but there is just no nothing happening in your trunk. Nope. So it's just kind of falling along, and there's the little flip there. Yep. So that's that's easy stuff to fix. We can get that fixed real quick. Good. And then I have to hold this kind of funky. I've never seen my, never seen it record like that. All that stuff's fine. It's all man. The hips didn't move at all. Huh. So yeah, you just kind of shallow it out by just knowing Dropping where it, it needs to go. Yeah. So you just kind of manipulate it. I drop the shoulder. It. I do the shoulder drop. Yeah. You do a great job with it. So the good thing, well, the bad thing is once you start using your lower body, that club's going to want to drop way to the inside when you're learning how to, when okay. you taught yourself how to kind of manipulate it to yeah. the inside. Obviously, that club should go to the inside and drop like that when you use your lower body correctly. But when you don't, and you just learn to kind of loop it mm-hmm. like that, so then when you start loop. using your lower body well, that's going to get way to the inside. So okay. you're going to feel a little bit steeper coming down yep. as you get too. the pretty... lower body working. Yeah. But that's really it. I mean, your lower body just didn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. So, what's your uh, driving distance, give or take? Oh, God. Um, I don't know. Last time I got fitted for a driver, the club had speed. Probably max was a little over 100, 105 maybe, 103. Yeah, so there's no reason you shouldn't be swinging in the teens, for sure. Yeah. But you can't doing what you're doing. Like, you have all the lag you could possibly need. Yeah, don't need that. You're on plane give or take a little bit, yeah. path, all that stuff's not, like maybe a little bit in doubt, but it's not severe by any means. So right. you, all that stuff is dialed in and working, yeah. but without the lower body muscle involvement, you just can't do anything with it. Right. So that's what I want to do. I want to do a uh, setup thing, one thing with axis tilt, because okay. you were kind of leaned into your left side a little bit, okay. and then as you went back, so the problem is when people set up with no axis tilt, the tendency is for them to reverse pivot. Yeah. As a low handicap, good player, you learn, you know that you can't do this, correct? Right. So you figured out a way to kind of blend all this stuff together. Yeah. But when your spine's really upright, that tends to steepen the swing plane. And in your case, it doesn't because you just drop it, loop it with your arms. Mm-hmm. So as we get this, this is all one, just making this change alone is going to feel really different. Mm-hmm. But when you go from here, which is going to feel like you have way more weight on your left side than you should, mm-hmm. to this, you're going to feel like you have way more weight into your right side. Mm-hmm. And then as I get you to shift and turn your right side, it's going to feel radically different. So even though it's not going to look dramatically different first, you're probably going to change in terms of hip rotation. You're going to add maybe 15 degrees of rotation, which is a lot in the golf swing, but like, it's not going to be like, oh my gosh, this is so radically different, but it's yeah. going to feel yeah. so crazy. Yeah. So this, and then I'm going to get you to shift and load and let your legs turn. And then from there, I'm going to teach you how to use what you've wound up going back. And that's going to be the tricky part. The right. back swing will get really fast. Yeah. So throw that club down for a second. Actually, hold on to it for one second. I want you just to use it to check your axis tilt. So okay. hold that up against your chest and your butt buckle. Yes, we'll drop. Yeah, and then just slide. Yeah, that's it. Axis tilt done. Yeah. That's all you need to do. And anytime you need to check it, just let it go in until it hits the inside of your leg and you're done. Yeah. That way you can do that every time. And now you have tilt. So now how does that feel? Look in the mirror and see how it looks and how it feels. So I can show you the video that I turned into Craig two days ago. And it was like this. Really? Uh, that's my that's my position. That's where my mistake is, right? That's normal when you're more right side dominant. I'm not. Because yeah. you're going to get like this. But as you yeah. start getting like this, this feels really, like it puts your right side into a weak passive position. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get over tilt. And the, where I noticed it the most was this wrist. Cupping off. Cups that address yeah. and it looks wrong. Yeah. <laughs> just just like that's that's not right. <laughs> so I'm like, I gotta go that way with it. Yeah, and the way we do that is literally just what you did, just adding yep. that little bit of tilt, and that takes care of all those things. There you go. So now look in the mirror and just see what that looks like. Yep. You probably feel like you've got a lot of tilt, but it's not that much. Yeah, I feel like I've got more weight on my left side than I usually do. Oh, because your hips are going that way. That's yeah. okay. But also your stance is a little bit wide. Yeah. So as we narrow that up, it's gonna balance out your feet a little. Okay. So narrow that up a little. That's yeah, that's perfect for an iron. And then just a little hip bump and let your as you're adding hip go back, back to vertical. Mm-hmm. Now just slide your hips to the left. Yeah. So your head's gotta fall back a little bit. Yep. With everything's gotta stay in neutral and then you just let this fall back and that hips go back. So there we go. Okay. And then your hand's gonna sit right there. And you're looking 
front of the mirror, mm -hmm. this is going to be like right on your pants seam, right on the inside of your thigh. Okay. And that's so just too far forward a little bit. Yeah, I just had a little press in there. Okay. Perfect. So now. Let's do it. We'll try it with a club and see how we do. Mm -hmm. But as you go back, I want your first move to be shifting into this right side. Now watch your head movement. Yeah, so that's you think. Of, yeah, it's not this. Yeah, I know. I want you to think about just pushing a little bit of pressure into this right glute, like you could almost lift your left foot up. That's an exaggeration, but that's what you need to feel. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and go back. Yep. And as you're doing that, you're going to start rotating. Keep going all the way to the top. Just turn. That's what okay. I'll do. Okay, stay right there. Mm -hmm. Now watch your hips. This is where they need to be. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So now, what do you feel in your right leg when I move? Right there. Way more load yeah. on this right side than what you're used to. And right? there's no load in the right side. Yeah, exactly. Because we actually watched it. It's almost wanting to reverse hip shift, which but you don't do. It's close, but it, and my leg straightens up too. It's straight. My back's it has to, right? Yeah. So, so now as we get you going and sitting into this, this mm -hmm. is going to feel really, really crazy. You're going to feel way more load in your glute and your hamstring. And, and so when I try to do that, I tend to get the knee flex going. So that's the trick. That's okay when you're drilling this at first okay. to actually squat into it because yeah. then you can really feel those okay. muscles activate. So I don't mind that as long as we don't get crazy with it. Okay, so yeah, there you go. Now that's a little bit too far with the hip shift and let your upper body come back just a little bit right there. Yep, good. Sit into it. Start to turn and let your hips turn. You're going to feel basically, it's going to feel like all your weight's on your right side as mm -hmm. you go to the top. There you go. Good. Perfect. What does that feel like? Um, good turn. Feels like I'm on my outside of my leg, like okay. that. So make sure you stay more in the middle of your foot. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get to the outside at all. Yep. Feel more weight here, or do you feel more weight here? Here. Yeah, exactly. That's why your shoes bulging mm -hmm. out like that. Yep. And that's why you feel weight going to the outside. So yep. what you're doing is you're not letting your weight shift back. Backwards, just exactly. You're just going more lateral. So as yeah. you're going back, a little trick I used to use to make myself because it's super common for golfers to want to kind of stay and pivot on mm -hmm. that is I'd lift my heel up in the air mm -hmm. and then I'd smash it down on the ground Stretch and trigger my swing. Mm -hmm. Just as a big exaggeration, I try to really sit into it mm -hmm. and to keep that feeling all the way to the top. So lift your heel up and then smash it into the ground. Even for, yeah, there you go, there you go. Now do you feel a little more loaded up there? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. You, should, you look much more loaded up. You squatted into it a little bit too much, so we talked about too much knees. Just a tiny bit, okay. but that was better. So let's do it again. Stand a little taller. There you go. A little taller, taller. Okay. So, so can I ask you a question on hip turn? Yeah. So there's this turn, which is not good, right? Because the legs gone. So that turn is that a turn? No, that's more of a squat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what you did there. So your hips still didn't. You didn't let your belt buckle turn very mm -hmm. much. And what you just showed me. It's in between those two. Yeah. Like you don't, your right leg is going to straighten up a little bit. Yeah. It needs to. And, and what we do a lot of times, most golfers like way overdo this, right? And especially like the older they get and the higher handicap, the more you see it really straightening a lot. Yeah. And then you've done the opposite or you just kind of like keep it frozen. Mm -hmm. We need somewhere in between those two basically where this is straightening a tiny bit, but that's because that's going to allow you as your leg straightens back a little. When you see it going this way, mm -hmm. it allows my weight to go back to my heel even, mm -hmm. or my ankle. But if I stay really flexed, I'm basically making my knee my primary balancing joint and moving into my front of my foot. So it's okay to let it straighten a little, and that will let your hips turn a little bit. So you don't need to do that exaggeration where you're really squatting into it, because yeah. you're already doing that, and that's restricting your hip turn. Yeah. And the more you squat, the harder it is to turn your hips, right? Yeah. And that's why even at a dress, I want you to stand taller. And then as you go back, it's okay to let that right leg straighten a little. Okay. Yeah, that's plenty of hip turn, or plenty of knee flex right there. Okay. And go back. Turn, yeah. Good. 
good. What if we wait here now? Yep. Yeah. So I can almost get yeah, up. There you go. So I don't want you back on the heel, but like right. right in the, the center to the middle. Mm -hmm. Center your ankle to the middle of your foot. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Straighten that right leg up just a little bit. There you go. That's giving there you now you can turn a little bit easier. Yeah, right? now I feel like I went this way though. You probably did a little bit, but I didn't see it because I'm looking at this view. Yeah. But I'm just watching the knee flex, that's okay. So yeah. let me watch you from face on and see if the hip stays in place now. Because kind of when I get back here, my down is, is sometimes this way. Right. Right. That's more that, that's the way inside. They think you're away from the inside, right? Yep. Your hip should stay on that line, the right hip line. Mm -hmm. As right, until right before the transition. During the transition, it's pretty common for everybody's hips to start shifting off that line. Mm -hmm. Most people shift off it right away or mm -hmm. move out one way or the other. So don't be concerned if you're like moving this way a little bit as you're at the top of your swing. Because in the real life, you'd be going back the other way. Okay. Anyway, so. And there, up your stance a little bit. Yep, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. There's that's okay right there. Right there is fine, but you can shift this way. So that's the difference. So what you showed me, the, you did a lot of knee flex, mm -hmm. and then you couldn't really turn, and then you tried to kind of straighten your leg up, and that allowed you another 10 degrees of rotation. Yep. And as you did that, your hip did go this way a little bit. Yeah. But all you need to do is just let your hip shift over, just like a baseball pitcher. Just okay. everything that's going on that right leg, mm -hmm. and then we can go. But like you're almost like 50 50 at the top, yeah. you need 80% going into that right leg. So I want you to actually go to lift your left leg at the top of your swing at this one. Okay. Okay. Now lift your left leg. See how much you had to move? Mm -hmm. So you really. Like, I'm not talking about like you're going to put all your weight on there, yeah. but I can get to the top, my normal swing, and I can lift it pretty easy. I still got to move a little bit. Yeah. But if you feel like you got to make this big exaggerated move, you didn't shift enough over there. There you go. Yep. Yep, one more time. I'll watch a couple more things here. I'm going to hold this club here. So go ahead and Too much slide? Just a tiny bit. Yeah. So basically, you're just going to keep your hip against the shaft the whole time. Okay. There you go. Perfect. Lift your left foot up just a little bit. It's not going to go very far. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so did you feel 50-50, 60-40? A little bit. Maybe 60-40 on the right. It's a little bit more. Yeah. A little bit more weight, and we got it. Okay. How do I do that without moving the whole okay. self over there. Great question. So, how do you do it without sliding, right? When you're shifting your weight, and when you're moving your hips, your hips are moving not just laterally, yeah. but they're moving back, because you're rotating back. Yeah. As you let your weight go back to your ankle, that allows you to move more this way without it moving against that shaft. Okay. Because if you go here, and you're like, okay, I've shifted, yeah. but I don't let my hip go back anymore, mm -hmm. then that's gonna look like I'm sliding too much. Okay. So you have to let your weight move back, which is part of you not being so squatted down. Yeah, right. As this legs are, as these legs are straightened up more, you're gonna feel like you can move back here and not feel that okay. your hips have to slide so much to get back to 80%. Okay. 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 There you go, straighten, stand up just a little bit. There you go. Yeah, that's perfectly fine there. Let this come in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, where do you feel your weight, or what kind of weight distribution do you feel there? Two thirds, one third. Okay, we're getting there. So the whole goal there is to feel that that hip is fully loaded up. Everything's sitting on there and just pivoting on that hip mm -hmm. socket versus really trying to squat down a little bit and mm -hmm. restricting the hip turn. So the taller you can feel it address, the easier all the stuff is gonna become. Okay. So try to stand nice and tall on your knees. Good. Good. Big hip turn there. Much better. There we go. Do that again for me. That was perfect. Okay, one more.
more time. Good. Let's take a look. Let's compare that to where we started. <laughs> Knees are perfectly fine there to dress. Okay. That was the one we just did. Yep. Straighten up a little bit. Perfectly normal. Now, you see how much more I can see your belt buckle versus when we were over here. Yeah. There's no turn. So your knee mm -hmm. barely moved, your left knee barely moved. And your weight. Club position is way different too at the top, isn't it? With arms. Very different. Yeah. yeah. You almost moved into the ball. I do. Way. If you look at my head, it's my head goes that way. Did it drop down a little bit? Yeah, it goes, if you look at it, oh, yeah, typically it, it goes this way. So you don't realize it, but your weight is actually going on the ball. Oh, I realize it. I just, oh, you do? oh, yeah. Okay. Like if you put it, if you put, if you held my head, I couldn't hit the ball. Really? Because uh -huh. it comes in like this. I see that, yeah. Right? It comes in like this, and then I straighten up. To hit it. <laughs> so it's, you like it's back, at, it's, stuff. it's back at impact. <laughs> it just comes in from, it moves like five inches. I see, yeah, it moved quite a bit. Yeah, forward and down. Mm -hmm. So that's costing you a ton of power because you're just off balance. I am, yeah. And your brain, your proprioception's like, I'm not going to put full juice into this because yeah, like, yeah. I'm off balance, right? Yeah, so, and then I hang on for dear life with my right hand at the bottom. So now you just look like you're poised, Yeah. right? You're balanced. Head didn't move much at all there. Lower body's moving. And that hip turn is normal. Okay. That's the right amount of hip turn. Maybe a smidge more than we would need in a real swing. But again, at this point, your lower body would already be making a downswing. So you mm -hmm. would you'd cut out three or four or five degrees of rotation with it. But that's what you need to feel while you're drilling, and you'll see that your hips I'm the camera But they yeah. went back where they're supposed to. In this in that one, the hips move forward in the backswing. They're almost starting to go this they way. Are, they yeah, are, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Whereas here, you're just sitting back here and I'm like, okay, now yeah. I'm loaded up and I'm balanced. Yeah. So now that we've got that, then we can use all that stuff to get us going the other way. Okay. This is the key to getting you going back properly. Mm -hmm. You'll notice your knee it moves a couple inches, which is normal. Inch and a half, maybe. And then do a full straight and lock no, out. No, 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 no. Yeah. But it's got, I spend 90% of my time in lessons getting people to not straighten their legs, right? Mm -hmm. So this is something that you don't deal with that often. Mm -hmm. But somebody does a really good job of anchoring into the ground, like you're super anchored. Mm -hmm. But then you just take out the whole lower half of your body. Right. So this is going to be only applicable to like, typically like lower handicap mm -hmm. players. But as you're getting comfortable with this, that knee moving back, this leg straightening up a little, is perfectly normal. It's okay. It has to happen to some degree. And I, I can show you videos of my swing. I mean, it moves an inch, inch and a half. It's mm -hmm. normal. It has to, that's a normal movement. Mm -hmm. So once we get this feeling comfortable, then the next half is getting you to work down. But I want you to do this mm -hmm. a bunch more. Yeah. And at speed. Okay. And then we'll see what we can get you to do coming down. So let's okay. just keep drilling this for a minute. Yep, nice and tall to the legs, perfect. There you go. Good. Get that left foot to feel kind of light at the top. Okay. Yeah, let your left leg come in. Yeah, there you go. So you have a tendency to keep it as out. you're going back to like just almost like you're exaggerating, forcing it to go out mm -hmm. instead of letting it go in a little bit. And again, most golfers do the opposite, and this comes in way too much. Mm -hmm. But you need for this to actually come in a little because if you do this, then you're you're making so much tension, especially in your hip flexor area, you open up the left hip, mm -hmm. you just can't turn anymore. Mm -hmm. And you'll actually, you probably are feeling a little bit of tension there. But as you let this just come in naturally, and feel this relax where your hip flexor and your groin okay. is, then it'll help you turn. There you go. It's just it makes a big difference. Making it just natural. Like if you feel tension right here, yeah. then it's, you're, you're forcing that leg to stay out, and then you just can't turn. Okay. There you go. Watch the outside of your right foot. Yeah. There you go. Yep. Perfect. Again. There 
you go. Left foot feel light, right foot feel yeah. more in the middle. Part of, take, part of the left foot feeling light is just letting the knee come in. Yeah, exactly. Because when the knee ha knee's staying out there, there's still a lot of weight. You're keeping the weight there. You're yeah. literally restricting but everything take, from moving. I mean, if you over-exaggerate, right? You yeah. Just, and that's what most golfers do. It's like they yeah. just, their whole lower body breaks down and it's moving all over the place. Yours is just doing the exact opposite. Right. There you go. Now you should feel that your arms and shoulders are going to be doing a lot less going to the top because you're using your hip turn now to help you get to the top. That's why you saw your position was different mm -hmm. at the top. The goal is to keep that feeling into the downswing. So now that you're, you know, instead of just doing all arms and hands, doing yeah. this basically, you should feel like it's a big turn that's moving your arms and your arms are just going to be doing less and less. Yeah, I'm not much about the upper body while we're doing this. Good, good. You should feel it, be feeling so just your trunk. Down. Good. Yeah. Just a little bit of that. A little bit outside. Yeah, you just got to watch that a little bit. Okay. Again, the more you narrow, so think about this. Your stance is a little bit wide. The more I stand out like this. Yeah, less I can turn. Part, it's part, technically I can still turn. I can't turn my hips, I can turn my upper body. But look where my weight is on my shoes. Mm -hmm. right? The wider I stand, the more I start pushing on the outside of my shoes. Mm -hmm. And if I stood really narrow, then my, my shoes wouldn't bulge out at all. I can yeah. see the outside of my shoe. If you stand just a hair too wide, like this, this doesn't look bad, right? Yeah. This is my driver setup, which is fine for that club. But now I start to see that I'm bulging on the outside of my shoe. Mm -hmm. For a normal iron, you're just going to be just a couple inches outside of neutral, right. and that's going to keep you from wanting to go way to the outside of your foot, because that's a death move. That's hard right. to recover from. There a little bit, huh? Yeah. Perfect there. You don't have really very wide hips, really. There you go. Let's do it again. I want you to try to come down from there. Don't think about it. I just want you to feel what you've got in your lower body and just use it to help you come down. I'm not going to tell you how to do it yet. Okay. You quit on your turn a little bit. Or that left foot. For that left leg didn't move in very much. Okay. So I could still barely see the left thigh in front of the right. Okay. So just let yourself finish your turn. Like that. Now what'd that feel like? Um, a lot easier going left. A lot easier going towards the ball. Good, good. Like a lot of times, like a, like a full follow through that time, a lot of times what I do is my upper body chases and so my swing sort of cuts off yeah. short. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't know why, but. Well, there's a bunch of stuff that's going on. But to get to a full follow through, mm -hmm. it should be as a result of you releasing the club and right. that's pulling you through, right? Yeah. But you need something to release the club with some speed to get you to pull it out of that full follow through, right? But you also need the momentum from your trunk and your core rotating before your whole swing was this. Right. So how would I ever get, if I'm anchoring my lower body into the ground and not letting it turn going back, well, it's not going to magically turn going through, right? right? And so you're never going to get around to the full finish unless you just kind of fabricate it or just free it. And that's why you said you feel like you did push I did. coming down off that right leg, right? mm -hmm. which you didn't do very bad. There's a little bit, but it's not that bad. But you, if you didn't do that, you'd have no follow through at all because there's no momentum to get you around. So yeah. now, as you feel wound up going back, you're going to feel like, oh, this is no problem for me to get through the ball now. Yeah.
take a look at this one. This was a couple swings ago. But so you start out really good at a dress, and then you have a tendency to kind of squat into mm -hmm. it a little bit. Yeah. So that's when you the more you squat into it, the more your leg has to straighten to allow you to turn. So if we just you got to feel really tall through your lower body mm -hmm. to keep that from being an issue. But it's not bad, but you see your knees going to move a little bit more than it really needed to. But now you're like you're almost across the line. You actually are across the line at the time, which <laughs> is going to exactly... Which I never do. <laughs> right. I can't get there. You can't, exactly. Yeah. But now, that's what I was saying, like, your swing has been all arms, right? Yeah, yeah. It's got a big loop. So as you've learned to do that, you swing your arms a little bit out of sync with your body turn, because that's how you get the club to the top. Yep. So you kind of swing your arms and then drop them to the inside. Now you're going to have like this really long swing if you did that, which obviously will tighten that up. But now as you're doing this, as you get longer and across the line, then you're going to come more from the inside mm -hmm. because you don't know how to use your lower body coming down. So right, so you made this great turn, but look at your lower body. Your hands have moved a foot already and your hips have barely moved at all, right? Mm -hmm. So because of that, because you've made this bigger, fuller turn, the club's going to come more from the inside. The hips aren't square right there, are they? Yeah, exactly. Well, they're trying to get out of the way, but they didn't get the head start they needed at the top. Mm -hmm. So that's where you're going to get this little right side push where your heels come up in the air. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit because you didn't do anything at this point. This is when they need to be really active, is this lap, this first foot of drop here, is we need to get them moving to get the club back down on its own without you doing Because if you don't, and you stay turned back here and you don't use your lower body at all, well, heck, I could come three feet from the inside, right? Because I could just drop my arms. So now as we get this going, the next step, this we want to stay a little bit taller through the lower body, but the next step is getting this to fire first instead of your hands. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yep. So that's, we put those two things together, everything else, the hands and arms and all that stuff are going to take care of themselves. You're still going to be a little long and loose at the top. That's just going to be something to tighten up over time. Mm -hmm. But the first thing I want to do, make sure lower body's working right, and then the arm stuff is easy. So let's get to the top again. Feel a little taller as you start that move, because your tendency is to be nice and tall, and then you lift your heel, and then you squat down. Mm -hmm. right? So you're just going to feel like you're just staying at the same height the whole time going back. Better. Okay. So now, from here, this is all going to relax. This isn't going to move. You're only going to focus on shifting from the left side. Relax that right leg. You pushed off the right. There you go. So the first move, the, the best way to think about this the, is squatting back to square. Mm -hmm. Get your knees back to square, your hips back to square. And let's just the hands will go where they need to go when we do that. Good. Perfect. Okay. Let's do that without the big shoulder turn as we start down. So your shoulders are going to stay. Your chest is going to stay pointed more back here. Good. Just your little, there you go. And as you do that, shift over to the left. Perfect. And relax the right leg. See how they're, yeah, do you see that? The right leg's all pushed mm -hmm. in like this. This is where you want to get to halfway down. Okay. So the first move, it's not driving off the right side. Once you get up here, then you're going to use that left leg, this move, mm -hmm. to get you going. And that's going to pull you back to square. But you don't want to be pushing yourself mm -hmm. back to square. That's when your shoulder's going to turn. So. If I go here, and my chest is pointing back here at the screen, and I push it all off my right leg, and I try to keep my chest back here, I have no choice. My chest unwinds. But I can open up my left hip, and I'll let My hips are back to square, but my shoulders are still way more closed. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to move and pull from that left side and open up that left hip. Okay. As soon as you push, your shoulders open. Make sense? Yep. To the top. And just forget about this guy. Open up some left knees in the first. Oh, there you go. Now look at your your right leg didn't move at all. Mm -hmm. Your shoulder, your hips are almost back to dead square. Mm -hmm. And your arms and chest can stay more close. Okay. Good. Okay. Now good. Look in the mirror. Yeah. You didn't shift to the left. So it's a, so the first move. The leg went, but the left. You did the leg perfect. But as you're doing that, we've also got to be getting that hip kind of sitting into that left leg. 
There you go, yeah. There you go. That's the whole critical move. From there, it's just going to be a matter of posting up. But the mm -hmm. first move is a little bit of left knee, opening up the left hip. That's getting us back to square with our hips. And then we're just going to be posting up, and that's done. But everything From there, it's just the arm just releasing. Shoulders shut. There you go. Now post up on that left leg, and you're done. And your arms would be coming down, mm -hmm. and you'd be right here. And then that's done. Okay. Good. Good there. Post up. There you go. Now at that point, at impact, we want about 80% back over to the left side. So that right, so you just hung back a little bit. Mm -hmm. We want to get the majority of that weight shift done during that initial transition. So we're going to be going, let's say we're 80% mm -hmm. at the top. We're going to go like back to like 60% on the left during that first move. So we're transferring from 20% to 60% a lot during that first move. There you go. Good. Yep. Good. Post up and release. Perfect. There you go. Flatten that left foot out. Keep that left foot flat on the ground all the time. There you go. Good. And the right foot can roll to the inside. If you shift enough laterally to the left, that right foot will kind of want to get light on the outside. Yeah. You don't have to push off of it, but you don't want to be flat footed there either. It's just letting you know you've got too much weight there. Mm -hmm. You pushed off the right leg a little bit there. We're almost shifted over to the left a little bit. So here and then. Sit into it a little. So what you're doing there, the reason you're not getting shifted over, is you're turning your hips too much. Your hips will typically do one of two things more than the other. It, they will either move laterally mm -hmm. or they will turn, but they struggle to do both. One typically overtakes the other because mm -hmm. the movements are totally different. The way that you create those movements is totally different. A lot of times when we're shifting laterally, we're going to use the right side to help out a little bit because we've loaded up that right side and it's super engaged and ready to go. So the tendency is to drive pretty hard off of it. Most people overdo that. But you're going to use it a little bit in a normal swing when you're doing it right. So if you do that and you drive, then you're going to slide. Or if you try to just turn, then you're going to just turn and not move laterally. So you've got to feel the best way I have found to describe it is like sitting into that left side. Mm -hmm. If I do this, now my hip is right over my left ankle. Mm -hmm. And then I've, I've shifted, I've turned, and I've done everything together, but without trying to manipulate that movement by driving hard off the right side or just turning. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Doing it. <laughs> Different story, right? Yeah, well, we'll get you there. Now think about sitting into that left side. There you go. So you're really close. would be ideally just a hair more over. Not your head. Just your hips, right? Mm -hmm. So left knee's gonna come right there. So now what you want to be able to do is draw a straight line from the center of your ankle, center of your knee, center of your hip socket. Mm -hmm. And once you're there, then it's a matter of posting up. Yeah, right there. And then you relax your shoulder. Yeah, and then you would release the club from there. There you go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Let's do it again. Okay. I think you're kind of sitting into that. There you go. You see how much now you, as you did that, your left your shoulders stayed back a little better, but you got a lot of weight over here. It's almost like you're lowering your left mm -hmm. hip to get all that weight over there. And then what you're doing is you feel like your left leg is kind of working, right? Yeah. Now post up off of it. You don't have to all hyperextend it, just kind of straight. There you go. And then you would release you'd be releasing at that point. Okay. Exactly. So the trick is we have to to get the maximum power with the minimum amount of effort at that point where it matters most, the release point. We have to be pushing off the ground mm -hmm. with our legs. That's why you see these long drive guys, their feet are literally in the air, right? And most amateurs like, don't understand how on earth you would do that. So all you're doing is, you, in order to do that, if you were gonna jump off your left leg, you'd have to squat down first, right? Mm -hmm. You can't jump like this. Right. And so as you're kind of sitting, or almost feel like you're falling into that left side, you're all of a sudden loading up this leg. And then you can be like, boom, you can okay. post up really hard. Yeah. And you're going to feel the left side working like you've never felt before, probably. Right. Because you haven't really used your legs at all. So if you're feeling a lot of work in this quad, and your glute, your hamstring, all of that, then you just post up and release it. Good. Kind of 
fall into the left side. Yep, toes stop and release. There you go. You feel your legs working a lot more than you're used mm -hmm. to, I'm thinking. Yeah, and if it weren't anything, what I used to feel is a slide and then the upper body stay back. Yeah. And the difference is they're all kind of there together. So the difference is how would you create a slide? Push off my right side. Exactly, right? So now I'm having you focus nothing but falling into this left side, loading this whole side, which mm -hmm. you've never done. Yep. So that's, you can't slide. Right. If you're using the muscles in your left leg, they can't move you past neutral. Mm -hmm. The only way you're gonna do that is pushing off that right. So yep. that's why you can be super aggressive and assertive with your left side, as aggressive as you want. As long as this side's not over-dominating it, mm -hmm. then you can jump off the leg. You see these long drive guys jump off the left foot. You yep. can do it as hard as you want. So right there, so look at your left foot. See how it's all mm -hmm. squirreled out there? I want that always flat on the ground. Okay. I'm gonna hit your palm. Foot's still moving. Yeah, don't hyperextend. You're just trying to move too far back. So we okay. should be here. So oh. a little taller, right? So if your hips are way back here, that's yeah. why you keep trying to straight hyperextend that knee. Okay. You're gonna be a little bit more on top of your left leg, or your left foot. Yeah. And you post up, just kind of right there, that's plenty and then you just release. You're gonna combine those two moves eventually. That release, that posting up of the left leg is what is allowing you to snap the release of the club without yeah. you using your wrists actively. Your hands are just following along. They're, they're holding onto the club, your legs are pulling your hands down, mm -hmm. your legs are then pushing against the ground, your left leg, and that is what's gonna allow the club to snap and release without you doing it. Close there, but you opened your shoulders. Now open your shoulders. Yeah. All lower body. Now you didn't quite shift enough. Look at your hip. Not not not, not shifting from up here. It's sh shifting from here. So everything is happening from here down, and mm -hmm. this isn't doing anything right now. So I'm literally, I'm kind of exaggerating, sitting into that left side. Mm -hmm. See how it's moving my hip forward. Mm -hmm. So now I'm trying to get these in a straight line, and then I'm just posting up on them. There you go. That's an exaggeration. That's a closed hip slide. Yeah. If you combine that a little bit less, that's a good exaggeration to feel it at first. Right. But you just did it without turning your hips at all. Yep. Squat to square while you're yep. doing that sitting motion into the left side. There you go. Now, so you did have some speed too. Now you can feel like, okay, mm -hmm. my legs are doing something now. Yep. That was good. Really good. Really good. Yeah. Setup stuff looks better here. We're not so crowded over a fist. We got a little bit more axis tilt. Good turn there. Much better. Much more loaded up. And as we come down, that's awesome. It's perfect. See how that's all of a sudden it's in a straight line. Mm -hmm. Now those joints are protected, but you're also in the most the place where you can generate the most force. Okay. You know, we're trying to squat up off that left leg, and just at this point your hands would actually be down here. Okay. In this. You're holding them back a little bit too much because we're doing a drill. But that's perfect. You're too big, I mean, our hands up, our head, and okay. balls coming right or really low. But the low, this transition move, this is worth a million bucks right here. Okay. That's what every golfer on the planet has to learn how to do right. If you can do that you, from the left side, then you're going to be in a perfect impact position every time without trying. Because mm -hmm. your hands have no choice but to go where your rib cage is telling them to go because it's attached where you're spine, your hips. Your pelvis is driving everything. Mm -hmm. Your pelvis doesn't have to do that much, but it needs to learn how to do exactly what you did there, which is perfect. And now 
now we've got a nice safe straight line and just release. That's it. Yeah. You don't need me, need me no more. We're, We're done. done. We're done. That was it. Uh, I'm not sure I'm feeling that confident yet. Well, we're getting there. <laughs> Make sure you're getting back onto that ankle at the top that you're not on the ball of your right foot. Yep. Yeah, nice and tall. Good. Okay, yeah. And so at that point, too much. No, I, uh, we're close there. Okay. But our hands would be here. Shut, chest would be a little bit more shut. Yeah, there you go. Whoop, let the hips open up. Now as you post up, is when that happens. Yeah. Relax those hands there. So now that you're, before you were you were captaining the ship, you were telling the club where to go with your hands and arms, right? Because that's all that was moving. Right. And that's why I felt a lot of tension there. Now your hands and arms are the opposite. They're the passenger of the ship, and that left hip is the captain of the entire downswing. If this works right, like we saw there, mm -hmm. everything else is done. This is all an autopilot. So the hands are passengers now. They're just along for the ride. This left hip's telling you everything, what to have, what to do, and you're just letting them fall. Don't try to like hold them back right now. The only thing you're going to feel like you may be holding back, which again, you don't want to hold it back. You just don't want to do anything with it. Is your shoulders? Okay. You know, you at first you may be like, okay, I have really a tendency to do this. I got to tell my chest, like I got to kind of physically try and make myself hold it back at first. But in the real world, if I don't turn my shoulders at all and just forget about them, they're going to be brought back right perfectly square. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of not doing anything with them and letting your arms start to work back down. Yeah, so your hands would be down there. It'd be halfway down at that point. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then as you straighten that leg, that's when the release of the wrist is happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to show you one example here. Really old footage of Tiger, like back in the mid 2000s. Mm -hmm. But I wanted you to see, kind of doing the same stuff with the lower body. He actually, in this case, he's moving his left leg to get that hip rotation started mm -hmm. immediately. So his left knee's moving immediately. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, yours was just going like out and restricting everything. So you can already see his left butt cheek. Yeah. But because he's getting his hips turned early, he's getting everything loaded up so that they can start the downswing. That's why I was saying like right away, push that foot in the ground, like get your focus on your hips so that they start turning. But then the transition move, his first thing to move is that left knee. Mm -hmm. All right, so now you've done the little squat to square right there. Right. Look where his, hand, his hands are there. Yeah. And then as he starts to post up, his hands are down by his thigh, like I was showing mm -hmm. And then from there, it's just releasing. But his lower body movement is doing all the heavy lifting to get the swing started. And then the arms and stuff are going to start to fire at that point. But for the most part, it's all lower body that's bringing everything down mm -hmm. to get him to that point. So you're doing that same move. Now he's got a driver here, so he's going to stay, his hips are going to stay back a little mm -hmm. bit from neutral, but with an iron. You're typically going to have the narrower stance, and that left leg is going to be in neutral. With a driver, you take a little wider stance, you're not going to get the hip all the way back over there, yep. just so you don't hit down on it too much. Yep, let the hands come down all the way. Yeah, so by the time, that's where they should be right there. Okay. Good. Is that, you think I'm doing that just because I'm holding my, is my chest turning, but I'm artificially holding my hands back? holding my arms back, yeah, uh, like you're literally keeping them draped across your chest. Yeah. They have to be able to move independent of your shoulders, right, to some degree, or of your chest, right? Yeah. Because at some point, if you didn't, you'd just be like mm -hmm. this. So as they start down, go ahead and let them start to fall. Basically, what's going to look like from your perspective, from down the line, is they just move vertically, just yeah. like this, while your lower body is doing 
the rest. Yeah. The trick is just not doing anything with the shoulders. The arms got to move independent, and the shoulders, if they turn at all, they'll always be too far open. So are you saying the arms need to be vertically moving more? They will, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. They not literally, if you don't turn your shoulders, your arms are obviously just doing this in the golf swing. Yes. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, your arms do nothing more than that. Right. That's the entire backswing. The entire downswing is this. Right. That's it. When you add complication to it is when you start swinging your arms across your body or start doing something with your shoulders. As soon as you turn your shoulders, your arms are so far away from the center rotating mass, right? Mm -hmm. So if my hands are way out here and then I turn it all, well, how on earth are they ever going to catch up with my chest? Mm -hmm. They never will, right? right? So that's kind of what you're doing. If you just add a little bit of arm rota or shoulder rotation, you don't let your arms drop down early, then they're just going to be buried. They're okay. going to be away from the inside. Shoulder shut, let the arms work vertically down. There you go. Good. This is just normal. Yep. And as you post up from there, you're just going to release. Perfect. Awesome. Beautiful. Good. Awesome. Release. Beautiful. That's it. Flatten that left foot out. If you find that your foot's like this, what do you think that means? Slide. That would be like this if you slid. You're not sliding. Um, I talked about it a little bit earlier with you. What would cause your foot to be, you know, your toes to be way up in the air? Heel. To yeah, your weight to stop heel. Hyper extend my foot. Yeah, well, that's part of it. That's yeah. a result of your hips being too far back. Yeah. Right? It's so interesting right. because I've always had, um, so from the, the standpoint of maintaining the touch line, right, I've never done it because my, my swing's always been I move this way. Yeah. So I lose it immediately, and then never get back. So by the time I'm at impact, well, you wouldn't want to get it back because this wouldn't make any sense to have your butt back here at impact. Yeah. Right. So your body's doing what it's supposed to. It's trying to maintain balance. Yeah. You'll never beat your proprioception, right? Your yeah. subconscious is always going to keep you from fall looking stupid and falling on your face. So what it's doing is saying, "Hey, hey, dummy, I can't hit a ball from here, so I'm going to stand up." Yeah. And it's getting into the right position, but that's where you should have started. That's why you can't maintain your. You're actually maintaining your touch line as to where it should have been. But if you're like this at a dress, of course everything's going to change. Yeah. So, yeah, so I'm too much flex in the knee moves in my touch line. Exactly. So that's why the first thing is like, all right, got to stand up. Yeah. Because there's nobody in the world can maintain their touch line with all this knee flex. Right. It's just, it wouldn't physically happen. Right. So as you stand taller, now as you go back, your hip, what you'll see most tour players do, they stand pretty tall. Yeah. And their hips actually will move back past the touch line a tiny bit. Yeah. And then as they squat to square, it'll get back into that touch line. Mm -hmm. And as they post up, they'll actually move back. But, yep. but you can't do it unless you start out with proper setup. Right. Makes sense. Yeah, there you go. Knees are straighter there. Stay tall. Good. Yeah. And you would be releasing. You, you're doing so good of getting those hips back to square that your hands need to be already down here. They need to move faster. They, they, they just, need to drop. They, they need, need to drop. Yeah, exactly. You're just trying to hold them back a little bit. So this is what I was saying earlier. Once your lower body starts moving correctly, which mm -hmm. now it's like aggressive, right? You're doing a great job getting the hip out of the way. I told you at the very beginning, your hands are going to feel steeper. The club's mm -hmm. going to feel steeper. In order for you to get your hands back down when your hips are moving that aggressively, they're going to have to start working down right away mm -hmm. because the hips are moving fast and they're doing, they're turning out of the way, which if you didn't do anything with your arms, it's just going to get your arms more stuck because they're back here at the top of your swing. So mm -hmm. now they've got to start working to you, it's going to feel like you're swinging over the top compared to what you're Sometimes used. I try to do that. So yeah. Like when I'm, when I'm really coming from the inside, I'll try to hit the big old slice pole. Right. It probably just makes it square. Just trying to, <laughs> just trying to do <laughs> that, right? But you're doing yeah. it with the arms, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So then you're just kind of you're just putting one band aid on top of another, yeah. another flaw, right? So, yeah. But now as you're doing this correctly, your hands, like if I show you that video of Tiger again, and you look at this. <laughs> It's a really aggressive move immediately where the club's just floating at the top with his yep. lower body, right? He's actually squatting down. His belt line's dropping because he's actually dropping. Now watch. Watch what happens to his hips and his hands. See if you can watch the two together. What do you see? Once that initial transition's done, mm -hmm. look at how much his hands move. His hips are starting to slow down already. Yeah, now the hands are really... Hands are moving. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. 
Whereas what you're doing is you're doing awesome getting your hips all the way to here, but you're holding your hands way back yeah. here. That's so. I wonder if I would do that on a regular. No, trying to swing. there's no way because you'd be trying to get the ball, right? Yeah. But when you're drilling, we still want to try to get it all yeah. as close to the real swing as we can. Yep. Yeah. This is the trick to power and speed and getting into the, you know, you go from, if you're going, you know, if you're stuck under 100 miles an hour, there's a bunch of mechanical things. Right? Mm -hmm. Once you get into the hundreds, like, you know, where you are like 105, that's like a pretty good low handicap speed. But to get over that hump, mm -hmm. everything has to be firing on all eight cylinders, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to get to 112, 115, 120, right. everything has to be moving fast. Right. So it doesn't do you any good to have really fast hips if you're holding your arms back. Mm -hmm. However, if your hips are really slow, like they are in most amateur golfers, and they're just they're really having a hard time trying to get this feeling, mm -hmm. well, then your hands have to wait until your hips get out of the way. Mm -hmm. But once your hips are moving fast, then the hands have to move fast. Everything has to be firing. And that's when you start to get everything going really quick, your, including your hands, right? Mm -hmm. I don't talk a lot about the arms and hands on the site because 95% of the golfers can't move their hips like this. Mm -hmm. you know, it takes them forever mm -hmm. to learn how to get that squat to square move, and they just don't get that until they really spent a lot of time on it. And by that time, they spent enough time they kind of learn how to gel the two together. Yours is like, okay, your hips are already moving 10 times more than they were an hour ago. Right. And now the hands have got to go to keep up too. Yeah. So everything's got to work together. Good. Yeah. Post up and release. Done. Perfect. That's it. It's the whole golf swing. One, your, the rest of your stuff is already working, like we said. Like you've got good arm movement, plane movement, lag, all that stuff. This is the whole trick now, and now that's working. So you just we're close to being able to hit balls. Okay. Yeah, look, see how your left foot's up in the air? Yeah, get a little rolled in it. Yeah, so your butt's just too far back there. So that's this. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You don't, just yeah, you don't you don't need to push your knee way back like that. Yeah. Just stand straight up. You're not trying to. The best way to think about this is this if, is if you're jumping. Cause that's really what you're doing. Right. You're trying to create vertical ground force. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't jump like this. Right. You'd jump up. Okay. So I think you're caught up in the idea of like trying to maintain the tush line or trying to get your hips back or maintain your spine angle or whatever. I want you to think about pushing straight up, jump. Sure. There you go. Just it's a natural movement. Yeah. This this is not natural, right? And that's why your foot keeps coming up. Right. Your foot should stay, you know, firmly planted on the ground. You're just trying to push the whole thing down to the ground. Yeah. Okay. There you go. A little bit. It's a little bit. You, you're, this is a habit that I can still see it's happening a little bit, but it's just not as That's severe right. as it was. Okay. But you're still just pushing that hip back behind you too much. Okay, so it really it's to get there. And then just jump right up in the air. Literally, yeah, there. That's it. That's it. You don't need to think about maintaining the tush line or keeping your hips back or you know, that's I'm not I'm not right now it's just, okay. it's just whatever so maybe it's something you drilled because you saw that you lost it or whatever because okay. your head was going forward but that was all a result of other stuff like you know keeping the legs locked in place right. not just, you know, all that too much knee flex good yep and just release so the straightening of the leg is when that re release is happening. So I like to I'm think of too soon. No, you're doing it too. You're well. You're straightening your leg before your hands are released. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So all I want you to think about is the squat to square. Get your hands halfway down. Okay. And then the post up move and the release are all one simultaneous thing. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Good. Now keep your chest back and you got it. Okay. Push, your right legs in like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just the right yeah. knee. As you're doing this, you're taking your right leg and internally rotating it yeah. like this, 
That's a really easy power. Feel that's what I do. That's what I've always. That's my. That's how you were trying to get your hips out of the way before. But now this left leg is doing all the heavy lifting for yep. you. So this just has to chill out. Because if you do anything with this again, it's going to open your shoulders too soon. Yeah. Too much right leg? A little bit. Yeah, see, yeah, that would be neutral, right? There you go. Perfect. I'm doing this. Exact. See a little internal rotation mm -hmm. right there? It doesn't seem like much, but you're going to do that with a full swing at speed. Yeah, I'm doing that. Bingo. That's yeah. where it's going to end up. So you, when you're drilling it, you really want to try to feel like the knee. Okay, so go ahead and rotate to the top. Right. So look where your knee's pointing. Mm-hmm. When you do that squat to square, that knee should still feel like it's pointing up this way. See how the course pointing that way? Yeah. Open up the hip. Yeah. Let your hip come over. There you go. That knee is going to be right over the foot. Mm -hmm. So that's square. Yep. But normally your knee is the way in. Right. You yeah. feel the difference I'll there? Yeah, totally. Sam Sneed did, did this better than anybody. He kind of overdid it. The, like it. the Sam Sneed squat, right? Yeah. You know, as soon as you do this, this is game over. Right. Everything's going to change because your hip is going to be forced to open, your chest is going to be forced to open, yeah. all at the wrong time. So it's really that's how you see a lot of golfers when they start pushing like this, they're in here yeah. and they're stuck, and that's exactly how you get stuck. Yeah. Yeah. So your knees pointing at me. Just keep it there as you start the left side movement. Get the get the hip over there. Yeah, there you go. Make sure your knee is not out past the there. There, it's a smaller move. There you go. Perfect. And then post up and release. Good. So you don't want this left knee going out past the foot. Mm -hmm. It's just a little move to there. Yeah. And this knee. So I'm here. Watch my right knee. It, just, it gets moved, but it's getting moved by the left side. If I do anything to move at all, it's always going to move too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Good. So now you got a nice stable base. Yeah. Now post up and release. Perfect. There you go. So your left foot's flat now. Perfect. It's kind of funny when I do that, I feel like I'm going that way just because I'm not doing this, right? Yeah, exactly. You were really, that's why your foot was so far up there. You were really trying to keep your hips so far back. Yeah, and I don't need to worry about the last thing on earth you need to worry about. You're, you're really good. Yeah. <laughs> that's almost, really I almost feel like I'm going that way. <laughs> You start shanking it, and then we'll change that. How about that? <laughs> okay. But I think it's all good. We don't need to worry about all right. it. Deal. Good. Good. Yep. One more. Good. It's like I need to feel a little bit of weight on my left toe. My left toe is almost. Okay, because you're to make so it feel flat. Feel, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Right, because it feels balanced that way, but it to me it feels like there's toe weight. And it's, it's yeah, there there needs to be right. Yeah. I, this feel is so subjective, right? But if you've been doing this for so long or trying to do this and that foot's up in the air, yeah. you're gonna feel like that, right? But it doesn't. What you feel is gonna change a lot, so be careful with that because yeah. you may you know, a week from now be like, I need to feel weight on my toe, and then you really are. Yeah, yeah, toes, not, right? I feel it. On my toes when I didn't used to. Let's just leave it at that. Good. 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 Left foot stay nice and flat there, so there was definitely not too much weight on your toes at all. Let's hit a couple, and I want you to hit them exactly like that. You're going to go to the top, you're going to stop, because I want you to make sure you finish your hip turn, and then you're going to come halfway down, you're going to stop, you're going to check in the mirror, I'm like, I might, if I do this, you're going to start to see things break down just because it puts a little white demon in place. Mm -hmm. So each step, you're going to stop, chunk, go through your process, look in the mirror, and make sure all, all, hitting all our checkpoints. Okay. First thing, let's make sure we make that proper hip turn going back. Okay, where's your, do you feel weight on the ball of your left, right foot too much, or is it okay? Is that better? It's, your right foot will tend to want to come up a little bit when you've turned enough and got, what you should notice, two things. If you go back and you feel any strain on your knee, mm -hmm. you don't have, you're way too far forward. Okay. That's the first thing. So 
it's not like you're necessarily going to feel pain. You've got to kind of pay attention to it. If you feel pain, you're way out of the ball. Yeah. But if you feel like, ah, it feels like there's some tension there. Mm-hmm. You're too far back and you haven't let this leg straighten up a little enough. Okay. So that's the first. Second thing is if you if your right foot comes up just tiny bit, I mean like a millimeter, mm-hmm. you'll notice more load in your right glute. Yeah. And as soon as you can feel those two, and I, I like to think of it as like, okay, right ankle, right glute. If I feel right ankle, right glute, I know that I've shifted and turned enough, okay. and everything is starting to work right. If I feel something else, like right toes. my knee or my toes, then I'm in trouble. Okay, good there. Nope. Did you feel your right leg? Yeah, I just didn't. There you go. That hand moves you down. Your, so your chest opened up a lot there. Where's your weight there? Feel a lot of weight on your right foot. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's why we want to chunk it like this because yep. we can stop and make corrections each step of the way. Nice and tall. There we go. Good. Hey, look, you, look how much your right knee has moved in. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Now your chest is already square. Is, that, is it like that? Yeah. Left knee would be over a little bit more right there. But your shoulders would be back here still, right? Yeah. See how much you can keep your shoulders closed still. Mm-hmm. Your hands are going to still be working down. Now as you post up, this is when we would post up and release the club. Yeah, that doesn't. That feels not normal. <laughs> what I'm looking for, right? Something exactly. That feels normal. If it feels normal, we haven't done anything. Yeah, then my hands are way out in front of me, where they're usually not. There you go. So now you should feel like you can almost do a squat move. Like, yeah. Okay. Now, post up and release. There you go. Better. Okay. okay. I just don't like that dash. I don't have that yet. Keep your chest back here at me as you start to turn. And your arms are going to drop down. Yeah. They need to be down there by the... If your shoulders are going to be there, yeah. your hands can't be way up here. So the interesting... There's a connection I've got between my arms and my chest that's not working right. Yeah. So, well... My arms need to... My arm can go ahead and drop before my chest moves them. Your arms have to separate from your yeah. body, right? Yeah. If, if they move together, they're going to be stuck. Yeah. Because, you know, they started here. You've moved them all the way up here. Yeah. And your shoulders have only turned, your shoulders, right shoulders only moved six inches. Yeah. And your time, your hands have traveled six feet. Yeah, so it's okay to be back here and then still let this happen, right? Yeah, exactly. Kind of the idea. As you're, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I'm moving. Exactly. But it has to. Yeah. Because right? now your lower body, before, your shoulders didn't really move at all. You weren't like a shoulder spinner, mm-hmm. right? like most higher handicap players. Mm-hmm. So if you don't spin your shoulders, you use nothing but arms. But now your shoulders are getting moved because your lower body is doing something I've never done before. Mm-hmm. And because your lower body is turning, your shoulders have to turn because mm-hmm. they're attached via the spine, but your lower body didn't move before. So you didn't have to worry about getting your hands to move quicker because they, weren't, they were just moving on their own time because they were the only thing moving. Right. Now that the shoulders are being forced to turn by your trunk, mm-hmm. those hands have got to separate. Yep. And this is all like so advanced stuff. I'm gonna put this online, and people are like, "Dude, you say the exact opposite all the time to high handicappers. You're a liar." Well, I try to cast. <laughs> <laughs> right? right? Let me do that. That's, that's exactly. Like Jeff Nicholson, he throws the club from the top. Well, look at the guy's lower body movement. Exactly. <laughs> that look at your shoulders opened up right away. Do it again. So that top. Yeah, but, but now that your hands didn't move at all. Right. If your hips, that, that move, yeah, they got to come down. Exactly. And now they're there where you, as soon as you post up, it's the release. Being yeah, that's what I don't have. Yeah, exactly. I do not have that because my hands are never there. Not exactly. Well, they're, they're here. Yeah. Them, right? Yeah. And the only way that they start to get down is because you're turning. Yeah. Your shoulders are getting turned by your lower, or you turn your shoulders a little bit. Yeah. So, there. Yeah. 
Almost like that, isn't it? It, it is, while this is doing the, yeah. this, right? Yeah. Yeah, because that's the one thing I feel, you obviously can tell from my swing, is I don't have any room here, right? Yeah. And so, I, and so I, and I'm holding on for, I'm holding, I'm controlling with my right hand. Yeah. But not in a push way. I'm actually kind of grabbing it to keep it from... Flipping over. Cause yeah. You're too, yeah, so you come too far from the inside yeah. and you're doing it with your hands. So I'm going... Yeah, you need to, or you're going to start sniping mm -hmm. everywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's the feeling when I, I know when I get here and I feel my that hand tense. Yeah. It's not, it's not casting it or flipping it. It's just trying to make the left hand stop. <laughs> it's holding on for dear life. Yeah. <laughs> and you're, I'm going to get you to do the opposite. I want you to release the heck out of it. I know, hand, right? Yeah. Every now and then I'll do it. And I'll go. Oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> It's way more fun when it's you way more release fun the club. When I do it right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Yep, they've got to separate. There you go. Yep. That guy back there. And perfect correction. That's perfect. Post up and release. Your post up, you cheated. We'll work on that second bit. Your right leg all of a sudden Did you do that? got pretty active. Yeah. But that move, you caught, this is why I wanted you to stop and make those corrections. You did it perfect. You caught the right knee, it was all kicked in. Yeah. And then you caught that you had started to turn your shoulder and your arms were still back here. So you went, you backed it up, and you're like, okay, left leg, left leg, keep this back, and then get my arms down here. Yeah. You have to separate like that. That was perfect. That was almost perfect, but if you keep, there you go. So you've got to get used to the idea of your hands moving independent. Yeah, that's hard. Of your shoulders. Keep this back, shoulders, arms down while you, there you go. Now, the trick is, that first move is almost all lower body. It's that squat to square. Mm -hmm. Once that squat to square happens, that's when your hands are going to start to really work, mm -hmm. and the hips are going to start to post up. So there's a lot of hip movement during the transition, mm -hmm. and then almost immediately it starts to slow down. Mm -hmm. Where most golfers make a mistake is that there's no hip movement during the transition. It's all arm and hand, which is exactly what you were doing. And then right at the last second, they try to move their hips, and it's like it doesn't do anything at that point other than create a bunch of problems. Right. So it's lots of hip movement. My arms and hands are still chilling. It's just the transition. Mm -hmm. But then the hips, once I get back to square, my hips are gonna start decelerating to post up, mm -hmm. and my hands need to be then accelerating. That mm -hmm. initial movement of getting that stretch where your lower body goes back this way and gets back to square is what starts bringing your hands down mm -hmm. while your shoulders stay shut. Like throwing a ball, right? My arm's actually going backwards while I'm taking a stride. Mm -hmm. And then my hips start to rotate while my arm's really loaded up back here, but then what do my hips do? Well, they start to slam on the brakes, mm -hmm. and then they start to post up, and then you throw. But your shoulders did nothing in that whole cycle. It's not nobody throws a ball like yeah. that, right? Yep. Your it's hand, big. but your arm is moving independent. Yeah, the disconnect between the arms and the shoulders is what's. Yeah. It's tricky at first. Got me. It's tricky. One of the main. But things. when you think about it, like as if you're throwing a football or baseball, anything, you have the exact same sequence. I'm keeping my I can keep my chest back here. I'm not doing anything with it. But it has to move from this. Yeah. And as soon as that happens, nothing else is moving but my arm. It's my arms moving and my trunk moving that is the golf swing. Not, not your shoulders. You turn your shoulders. Yeah. Arms down. Yep. There used to be this hideous training aid back in the day where you literally just did this over and over and over again. And it was like a big, like a weight training machine. But it got you the idea of moving your arms independent of your shoulders. But it just made you not use your legs at all. There you go. Go to the top again. Now just arms. Nothing but arms. Straight. There you go. Again. Just keep doing that. Yeah. Now, keep doing that. And use your lower body the way we've been working. Uh-huh. <laughs> It's rubbing your head and patting your belly at the same time. I never could do that. <laughs> I couldn't either, actually. There you go. So now you're starting to get the feeling of it's just using your trunk. So you can do this. Go to the top of your swing. We're working on 
starting out too many things at once. But go to the top of your swing. This is like homework when you go mm-hmm. back. And you just start doing this. I'm like, okay. Then you start to feel like, okay, well, if my shoulders are really tight, or I've swung my arms too deep, or I've swung them too far, this movement becomes really difficult mm-hmm. because my arms are so out of position mm-hmm. that I can't get them to work right because the muscles are engaged the wrong way, right? right? So you start getting the feeling of, okay, my shoulders are relaxed, my arms are relaxed, my arms up and down. And then I just combine that with lower body movement, my hands go right where they're supposed to. Don't be afraid to move with some speed. Like this? Yeah, there you go. Now combine that with the lower, the left leg. Aha! <laughs> like that? Exactly like that. Yeah, just so you just over. keep the feet. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> well, it's, it's learning. This is still the captain of the ship. Yep. Right? But right now, because you're wanting to keep your arms up there and get them stuck, and we've got to kind of put the, this two together. But this is more homework. Okay. I need to make sure that your lower body is doing all the heavy lifting yeah. right first. Yep. And then when you go to like putting it all together, that'll probably be the next thing, okay. is getting your arms to separate a little bit. Yeah. But I think that'll come pretty natural because you did nothing before but use your arms. Yeah. I think what you're going to find is that you're going to struggle to use your lower body enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm already in. I'm still in. Right. right. And, and using it right. Like you're still going to make the mistake of pushing or not shifting enough, shifting too yeah, far. Yeah, it's the shift. It's, it's taking that out. Yeah. Yeah. And getting this into the right spot. Yeah. So that's more likely to be the thing that you're going to spend the most amount of time in, probably the first three weeks mm-hmm. of just focusing on that whole getting it. We had to think about going back, first yeah. of all, that, but you're doing that really well. But as soon as you put balls in the mix, oh, yeah. it's going to fall apart a little bit. Yeah. So you just need a lot of reps doing that way and lower body, and then worry about the arms. But the arms, like uh, just giving you that drill and now knowing where your hands should be while yeah. your shoulders are shut yeah. and your lower body's doing all the heavy lifting, yeah. it'll become pretty natural pretty fast. Okay. Good. So don't worry about that one too much, I guess is the, the point of the story. Here. So, all right, so I was going to, again, just kind of reinforce this idea of in the transition, all lower body, and that could, he's already back to square. Look how far back his hands are. Yeah, and that's really early in the downswing. But then the hand or the lower bodies, it's like it's done the majority of the work, mm-hmm. and the hands are separating. So look how shut his shoulders are. Yeah, and his hands. The best way to think about this is look at the hands in relationship to the right shoulder. His hands have gone oh, yeah, two still, feet below his right still shoulder. Way back, isn't it? The right shoulder is still there. Yeah. But his hands have dropped two feet. Yeah. His chest is dead shut. So all he's trying to do is get his hands back in front of his sternum, essentially, right? Because they're way back here, mm-hmm. and they've got to get all the way back down here somehow. Because he's going fast. Yeah. Everything's hauling ass right now, right? Yeah. So the arms have got to go fast too. You can see his left lat working really hard to pull the club down. Yeah. And then as he gets into here, the left arm's working really, really hard. It's a ramrod straight. The right arm's already released. So this is, a, this is where people make a mistake. Is they go to the top, and instead of using this left lat and arm to pull down with the left side of the body in conjunction, using the left hip and left arm, they go right arm. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this starts steepening and getting out and getting out front. You can see his right arm's already fully released. Yeah. So what is he going to do with his right arm at that point? Let it go. He can't do anything. And it's already straight. It's already here. Mm-hmm. So, so many people get confused, like, oh, I'm just going to do everything with my right side. But when it's done right, and this is back when it's, when it's prime, when yeah. it's really, really smoking it, this right arm is just trying to get width. The whole, the beauty of the swing, when you start trying to add speed, is trying to make that swing arc as wide as you can at the right time, because that's free speed. The wider you make that circle, the faster the club has to go, right? right. So instead of being like this, and being all stuck and jammed up, where the radius of the circle is tiny, He's like, nope, I'm going to get my arm as wide as I can, as soon as I can, yeah. and get the club to release at that point. And then it's the release and the width that's giving the speed. So as part of it, I'm just going to exaggerate that, like yeah. out, like instead of towards the target, almost away from the target. Yes. And again, this is where you start getting stuff like Jack Nicholas saying, oh, I'm trying to throw the club from the top as hard as I can, and then every amateur goes and tries that. It's yeah. the worst freaking thing in the world, right? Right. When the lower body's working correctly, you can't get your hands to move fast enough. Because think about how far does your hip have to move? Yeah. 
six inches, mm -hmm. eight inches maybe. Mm -hmm. Your hands are gonna move six feet right. in that same amount of time, right? Yeah. Well, in the sequencing of time, right? So yes, your hands have got to start to go if your lower body's moving correctly and you want to hit the ball far, everything has to move fast and that includes your arms and hands. So mm -hmm. that means that slap is really pulling the club down because his hips don't have to move that far and his hips are moving fast. Mm -hmm. You want to hit the ball fast, your hips have got to move relatively fast, so about 10 miles an hour. But then the hands are going to move almost double that. Mm -hmm. So, and part of that's the width that, of the radius of your hands are going to move faster anyway. But you do need to start getting the feeling of separating. You look at, we'll look compare the two. Look at your shoulders. Like look, well, look where your shoulders are in relationship to his. Yeah. What What do you see? Um, the shoulders look about the same. They're right almost there. freaking identical. Yeah, but the arms are different. Look where his club is and where your club is. Yeah. That's all the difference is. Yeah. Your lower body movement, now you're hitting an iron, so we're going to be a little bit more posted up on the left side, right? Yeah. He's going to stay back with the driver a little bit more. Yeah. And you're pushing a little off the right side, but it's, it's pretty darn close, right? Yeah. But his hands are here. Yeah. Yeah, at least, right? So look up here in front of his right. Oh, yeah, yeah, it should move it down here. Yeah. And this is actually a little bit of a quarter angle. Yeah. Which would make his hands look further back than they actually are. Mm -hmm. If I'm actually, yeah, he's looking at you like this, which yeah. would make your hands look closer. So yeah. his yeah. hands are, like you said, they're close to his thigh. Yeah. So that's how much separation has to happen, and that's what you can see happening after. This is the key, people. After the transition, after that initial squat to square, then the hands have got to start moving because the hips, you know, the, hip, the hips go first, and then the shoulders get moved yeah. by the hands and so, or by the hips, and then the hands have got to go. Now I'm gonna hear everybody on YouTube saying, Chuck says to throw your hands as fast as you can. <laughs> there you go. Mm. It feels strange at first if you're not used to separating your arms from your chest. Which I'm not. Yeah. Shoulder back, hands down. Yeah. And it kinda? That's it, exactly. You saw that with his right shoulder, right? Yeah. That's why I love this old footage of him because it's there's so much stuff that you can glean from this at this angle. How his right shoulder just chilled out, but the hands have moved two feet. Mm -hmm. And then let's see that lat just go completely it's totally lengthened right here, yeah. his left lat. Yeah. And then watch that puppy engage right there. And now you can You're see ripping. nothing but left lat going to town here. Mm -hmm. If I can use this stupid thing. Now, as soon as that guy's ready to fire. And there's, I mean, look at that, you can there still see it right yeah. there. It's working, 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 and that right arm just helping to cr increase the radius, increase mm -hmm. the width of his hands. And then he's just posting up and releasing. Boom. Nothing but post up and release right there. Right. That is how That's it's all done. That's all you need to do, huh? Yeah. Little chunk shots? Yep. Don't get too concerned about thinking about your arms right now, right? Okay. I'm more concerned, concerned about my left. That's all that's my weight shift to left. Exactly. So, don't, so the, the point of that is you may hit some funky shots because your arms are going to be so freaking late getting yeah. the impact that who knows where the, you could hit what, the six foot behind it. So yeah. don't worry about that. Yeah. Focus on your lower body movement. It's just a matter of not using it. If you, uh, yeah, there you go. that's shoulder movement though. Use your, yeah. It's like the right shoulder and the right leg do the same thing. They do. You yeah. want to push because it feels awesome. It feels so powerful. It's, it it feels lazy to me. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't. I don't feel like I'm. I don't actually feel like I'm doing it, but I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So to me, it's just lazy, and I don't feel like it's a source of power. Obviously, I'm subconsciously using it for that yeah yeah for sure you almost everybody does they use it way too much mm -hmm. but it takes a lot of time to develop the kinesthetic awareness to recognize when you're doing it mm -hmm. and so you just really have to slow way down at first and be like okay i'm gonna literally sit in front of the mirror and watch this right knee and i'm gonna make it stay like oh i really want to do that and yeah. you'll start to catch it but it just it takes like 10 minutes of just paying attention to nothing but that and that's why it's difficult to add too many things while you're working on stuff. Because this, the right side push, really takes a while to feel. You did do that again. Tried to do it. Okay. Just focus on your lower body, your left side. Yep. I'm just holding your shoulders yeah. back. Yeah. 
they're wanting to open a little bit too much. And then all the way down there at that point. It's crazy, right? Yeah. As you can feel, I mean, if you get to that spot, you can feel how that's going to just happen. It doesn't have a choice. Doesn't have you're, choice. Just, you're just literally releasing it. Yeah, because it's already there. Yeah, it's exactly. In a, it's in a, yeah, instead of being looked back over here. Yeah, then you have to do something. You gotta, you know, if you're way back inside mm -hmm. and you, you know, you're gonna add any speed to it at all, you have to hold on to it with your right hand and keep it from flipping over. Yeah. The left hand's not strong enough, right? When you're in that position to keep it from flipping, it wants to release, right? Yeah. That's why when you hit balls and you let the right hand come off, mm -hmm. almost everybody starts instantly hitting a draw because mm -hmm. that left hand's just like, oh shoot, I don't have any control. But this guy can steer and do all kinds of crap, and that's what you find happening in your own swing. So right. you're just impeding the release. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The right hand. There you go. Good. More? No, that's right. Yeah, let your come back. There you go. Should feel a little more evenly distributed on your weight now. Feels a little more on the right than a normal. Yeah, so. you were a little bit like this still. Yeah. And so that's actually open hips, a little bit open chest, and very little tilt. So I'm getting you back to square. leg when you go for the release. Good. There you go. Good. Right leg's chilling out better there. Good. Put a little speed in there together because you had the release, the, the post up there, yeah. and the release there. It was good. Yeah. Of that in there probably right you were a little bit outside a little bit steep above the plane going back just yeah. a tiny bit um and so that obviously gets that thing going right it can because yeah. it's because you've got momentum going out away from yeah. it right and yeah. instead you need momentum going back right. around do my, are, when i do it right are my hands getting sort of deep enough behind me and my yeah okay. and when you when you are not, you're not even thinking about it, your hands are in a great spot at the top okay but it's just a more matter of loading up the right side correctly a little taller. There you go. You can have a little more hip turn. But no, no, don't squat more. Yeah, there you go. So the more hip turn is going to be more from getting more weight off the left side. So when you, when I said get so more hip turn, the left knee come in a little bit more. Huh? Exactly, exactly. So more hip turn should be that. Exactly. Doesn't have to be crazy, right? But yeah. a little, I mean, a half inch of hip movement is like five degrees, or half inch of knee movement is like a half, five yeah. degrees of turn for sure. Yeah. So that's normal, right? If I let it do that, then yeah, I... Yeah, there you go. Then you're more coiled up, you've turned more. Okay. Yeah. And you'll also, remember I showed you the, the video at the beginning, I kind of glazed over, but if you look at Tiger's start to the swing... Yeah, his left knee goes early. A little bit of movement right there. He's just, he's not restricting it. And so many people get so confused, like, oh, you should really restrict your hip turn. Mm -hmm. If you overturn your hips, absolutely. Mm -hmm. you, should, you know, you've got to learn to keep your hips a little bit more quiet. But the reality is most players, as you get into better player stuff, and, and myself personally, I actually, this is really going to kill people for the loop. 
hey, you guys wanted you know, more better players. This is like a complaint I get. I want more better players. Like, I don't have any control who shows up for a lesson, <laughs> good or bad. Yeah. But I actually turn my hips first. It's the first thing I do because yeah. I think of the swing as what pieces do I want to unwind first in the downswing? Or the first thing to start is weight shift and hip rotation. Mm -hmm. So guess what I start my backswing with? Weight shift and hip rotation. Yeah. Now, most golfers are like all over the freaking place, so we say, hey, right shoulder, break back, and quiet the lower body. And then if you get you know, the point where you can coordinate the sequencing, the timing, and everything, mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, let's get this thing going. So mm -hmm. my right, my little right heel trick that I mm -hmm. used many, many years ago, it just helped me get my hips going so that I could get them to start the downswing first. Mm -hmm. Whereas what your tendency was, was let's get the arms, and that's what most people do, arms and hands, and then just freeze this in place. So mm -hmm. don't be afraid to let your hips move Earlier. right away. Yeah, immediately. Because yeah. they're, the, they're the first thing that has to move in the downswing. Okay. Right. So it's okay to let them move as long as it's not wildly going all over the place. I'll try to move them first. See what happens. Yeah. There you go. And then they'd already be by the time you're there, they're already going the other way. Right? Yeah. I moved them first, or at least I thought, felt like it. It wasn't. It didn't look like you moved them too much. That's for sure. Do one more time, and we have one tiny little tweak. Did you feel how that opened, it made it easier for your hip to turn? Yeah. You're wanting to keep it out here still, mm -hmm. just a tiny bit, letting it come in a natural amount. Letting it come in. Don't try to move it in. Yeah. But let it come in. Don't be afraid. Yeah, I don't feel it. like I don't. Uh, I'm not consciously trying to keep it anchored. It just that's just what the swing is these yeah. days, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not, I'm not sitting there going, don't move the left leg. I gotta think, go ahead. You may have to actually I need, yeah, have to let think, it move, move it. Yep. Now, yeah. yeah, that was a little excessive, but that's okay. Okay. Just watch it in the mirror. Mm -hmm. That's perfectly fine. Right there? Yeah, perfectly fine. Normal, right? And you look at Tiger's almost in the same spot. Okay. You can kind of use that as a visual reference. I'll move him to the point where he's starting this transition. Oh, he's pretty much starting it right there. That's pretty much, he's still got a ways to go with the club. Yeah. But by that time, he's already squatting back to square. Right? Yeah, his knee's going the other direction. Yeah. But his move, there's a lot of internal rotation on that left hip leg immediately. Mm -hmm. Technically, it's external because his hips are rotating. But right there, by the time he's there, his hips are... His left knee is done. Like he's get he's thinking about I gotta go the other way. Mm -hmm. you know? Good. Yep. Yep. Right there, right? Yeah, exactly. That's where we'd be by then, right? Mm -hmm. Shoulders. Do again? Okay, yep. Gotcha. This guy. Yeah. This guy's going to help pull that arm down. So don't move your shoulders at all. Yeah. Okay. Move your hands down as hard as you can. What do you, muscles do you feel like each? Yeah, right there. Yeah, exactly. That's what you're thinking about. So if you go to the top, go to the top for me. And just kind of one of the ways I like to think about it. You gotta fight me to pull this down. Okay. First thing I'd do is I'd use my legs. So that's yeah. the biggest, heaviest stuff right. I got, right? So I'd use my legs, and then I'd start using my lat to keep pulling this club down, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you see how lag naturally occurs as you're pulling. Yeah. All of a sudden you've got all this lag, right. and then all you gotta do is get rid of all of it. Yeah. Legs, not shoulders. Does that make sense to think of it in that sequence? It does. I still don't feel comfortable with the move to the left. The initial move. Mm -hmm. Okay. With my lower body. Okay. Let's take a look. It, it, it just feels like it's different every time. Oh, okay. So, there. So, no? No, it's fine there. Okay. Great, yeah. Yep. But that. 
you got to combine that with the separate. Uh, that's why your hands look like they're still way up here. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm still finishing my backswing on this, yeah. right? Yeah. If you do that with the hand separation, it's going to feel right because your hands are going to be like not buried, stuck way mm -hmm. back here behind you. It's, it's, so, this, so that that move great. plus the. Yeah, exactly. That move. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Just rubbing your head and yeah. rubbing your belly and patting your head. Because if I'm not moving my shoulders. Yeah. Am I moving with the lat right there? No, it just feels like it's dropping. Well, it is because you didn't have any hip movement. Yeah. Your hip movement, so think of it this way. To use a muscle, you got to stretch it first. Yeah. Right? So if I go to the top and I don't do anything with my lower body, well, this lat's not really loaded, it's not mm -hmm. engaged. But if I do that and I watch just my lat, yeah, stretched. Now all of a sudden, I've got this thing loaded up. Yeah. Your lats and your back, the muscles that you're going to use in your upper body, they get tensioned during the transition. So you, if you just do this, this feels retarded, right? That's why I didn't like that training. I think it was the lead better thing. You could, oh. It was just this big machine. You just did this all day. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about this, right? Yeah. Because there's no power here. Yeah. I have to load that dynamically yeah. with that transition move. And now this is stretched because I'm holding my shoulders back. I'm not using my shoulders. Yeah. So if they don't unwind, then this lat gets super stretched. And now all of a sudden I feel like, oh, I've got something to pull the club down with. Okay. Yeah, so now this should feel like you've got something to use. Yeah. Yeah. And then you'd be using that during that time, yeah. And then you just release it. And then we do that because I was grabbing and hit you. That's right. <laughs> it's really hard to tell where the ball's going to go these days. <laughs> doing this. Yeah. And it's going to be really difficult to feel the proper load and timing and power when you're stopping and chunking it, right? Because yeah. this would all be one continuous yeah. motion. Because you get the power, then you stop and you kind of lose it. Yeah, exactly. So we, you might feel it during that initial move, but then it's like, oh, but I'm stopping here and I've just released all the tension. Well, yeah. at that point, we're taking all that freewheeling momentum that we created during the transition and then just letting it go, right? right. Try one. Let's just try one, where we just put it all together as one motion. Just swing? Yeah, just one motion. But you still got to go 30% normal speed. So I'm not trying to get tons of power, but I want you to feel how it's all going to blend together. But I still want you to focus 100% on the lower body. Okay. It's going to be difficult to move at that speed, even that speed, and get everything that we're trying to do to work right at first. Yeah. So I don't expect some amazing results at first, but what I would like to see is that at least the backswing stuff, if yep. you're going to go with speed, is right. Okay. Downswing stuff is going to be way harder to get right all at pace. But okay. Go ahead, I'm going to video one here. Let's just do one more and see what's sticking in there. So go ahead and you can go at... at 30% speed, just focusing on the lower body. Okay. No left side. And that's going to be normal to, you know, when we try to go too fast, too mm -hmm. soon kind of thing. But let's see how the back swing is. Setup's better. Yeah. You got a lot more room. Oh, they start to they start to sink into it. Did I? Yep. <laughs> See the knee flex mm -hmm. increasing? Yeah. And your left knee didn't come in. You didn't allow it to come in. When you turned your hips properly, what, where was the club at the top? Oh, it was across, across the line, right? right? At least down. Exactly. Right so now we're laid off. That's my normal And that's because now. you didn't turn. You just, mm -hmm. it was all arms, not lower body. Yep. So then on the downswing, it doesn't really matter because. I know we didn't load up going back. So you can see your transition is the opposite. All hand movement, mm -hmm. no lower body. Yep. 
Right. So it doesn't matter. Yep. So the point is, A, like to get in there and see what's sticking. Yep. And then B, once you see what breaks when you go to add full speed, you're like, okay. So basically, in a two-hour lesson like this, we're covering a shit ton of ground. Yeah. Right? This is not something you take away and you fix in a two-hour lesson. It's impossible. Right. But what we want to see is like, what's going to break down? What do we have to fix first? We know what the priorities are. You know what you got to work yep. on, right? Yeah. But what's typically the sequence that we're going to work on is we got to get the backswing working correctly, or there's no shot in the downswing. At speed, if it already didn't happen, right? Yep. So we're like, okay, when we go to hit balls and practice and you're out, if you're going to go to the range and hit balls, totally fine, but you're only going to be able to pick one thing. Mm -hmm. And for right now, it's going to be nothing but lower body. Like, i got to get loaded up and more importantly, i got to turn. i got to let my hips turn. Mm -hmm. Then when you're going home and you're drilling or you're going to work on drills that day, then you can start to you know, chunk it back together, work on the lower body movement in the downswing, and then later on, a month from now, two months from now, whatever, the hand movement. But yep. So we know right away, as soon as your brain goes back to hitting the little white demon, yep. we go back to old habits, everybody does the same, that's yep. why we gotta drill the snot out of it. Yep. So, what you need to keep doing for now is chunking it, feeling it, breaking into chunks, and then all you're gonna do is make those chunks smaller and smaller and smaller, like there's gonna be less time. So you're, you're not gonna go to the top and think about it forever, because you're like, oh, I got it. I look in the mirror, take a quick glance, good. Downswing, okay, shoulders back, left leg transitioning good and yeah. so on and so forth and you just make those pauses smaller and smaller okay but we're going to keep chunking it for now all right better turn so now you let your left knee come in but you probably had to think about it a little bit i did yeah perfectly okay that's normal at first when you're yeah. doing something that's foreign to you that's going to be what when you go to practice if you're going to go out and hit balls that's going to be the only thing you probably think about for weeks while you're hitting balls. Okay. So same thing. Yeah. I would let your left knee move immediately. It's almost like you do this and then you try to yeah. let it kick in. Let it go right away. Okay. There you go. You're easy to get back over on that right side. Like right. A little too much, but we're close. Yep, right there is perfect. Okay. Yeah, good. Now use that to, yep, good. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Shoulders are okay. At that point, that's exactly where they'd be. All right. Straighten the leg, you're gonna jump and put, jump and release. Good. There you go. Good. Good. Good, yep, good. That's actually bringing the club down above your forearm. Whereas before, normally the club drops this, way under your yeah. yeah, it's usually back here. Yeah, it's actually above your form. Yeah. That's why I said you're going to feel like you swing over more over the top when you're putting all these things together right. in the future. Yeah, because usually it comes down like that. Yeah, exactly. Exaggerate a little bit. to the left you tell me how do you know if it is or not well it doesn't feel like I'm getting enough weight over there okay how but did you look, know well it feels like the weight's pretty evenly balanced when I make the move okay so when I go here this feels 50 50 okay so how what is a simple checkpoint looking in the mirror how would you know if you shifted or not um, you got me. Okay. So the, the, the simplest, easiest way to know whether or not you've shifted far enough laterally yeah. is if that left hip is in neutral joint alignment. If it's okay. over the foot... It's too far. No, no, it's where it's supposed to be. Oh. The left hip should be over the center of the ankle, right? Okay. But if it's back here, then you just haven't shifted enough. Okay. It's a simple way you want to think about it. You just look at it and be like, okay, how so do I... That's, you're inside, right? Yeah, so I need to be there. Yeah, exactly. All right, that's why I didn't feel right. Yeah. So you need to, you should remember that checkpoint, left hip in neutral, and then you'll be able to check it in the mirror. Yeah. Okay. I was going to 
see if I could get it where you could see as you're coming down. See the club? See the club coming down steeper. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So go ahead and come. <laughs> is it back? There's a mirror and then a reflect head. That is really trippy. It is crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, yeah, good. Now watch. Yeah, keep your shoulders back. You see how steeper the club is? Oh, yeah. And as you post up, yep, yeah, there you go. See, it's actually coming down a little bit, a smidgen above the plane when you are moving everything yeah. correctly. Yeah. Right. So it's going to be... Lots of big pull hooks. <laughs> <laughs> I <just> started. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, it's possible, but the reality is that you would never get that steep yeah. in a real swing hitting balls right now. Right. You're still going to have too many of your old habits yeah. fall back in there. If you got to the point where you came down, I mean, that, that club's a foot different than where you'd oh, start yeah. at least. Right. So then you would, because you'd still be used to flipping it, you probably would hit some pull hooks, but yeah. I don't see that happening right now. But the good thing is when you're using your lower body aggressively, it's really hard to swing over the top. Okay. It's virtually freaking impossible. Yeah. Most people, when they're using the lower body really aggressively, they, they tend to cheat and do it off the right side. That's what I And do. that gets you really stuck, yeah. right? But as you start going with the left side, as long as you're not doing anything with your shoulders, it's almost impossible. Like, the harder you fire your arms, the club just comes down on plane. Mm -hmm. Let me see you there now. Right? Yeah, exactly. So by the time that your shoulders are about 10 degrees shut, yeah. 10 or 20 degrees shut, your hands need to be by your thigh. Okay. By the time they're square, that's impact. Okay. Yeah, unless your hips are shut there. Yeah. And post up and release. Trying to make sure that we're yeah. okay. Yeah. See that? Feel, I feels, it feels right. It feels like there's more of a crease, a crease in the pant there. If I, if I hang, if I don't get over there, there's not as much of a crease as if I. You shouldn't see that crease because your hips should be more open at that point. Yeah, but as far as getting my weight shifted here. Yeah. Before that. Yeah, that's okay. Bad idea. I'd have, well, if your pants are creasing, it typically is because your pelvis is turning into your hip socket. Yeah. Right. So like if I just forget golf for a second, I kept my leg exactly here. Yeah. But I turned my pelvis, then my pants crease. Yeah. Which is what you do in the backswing. Yeah. Right in the backswing, I actually try to keep my leg from rotating too much because I don't want this stuff. Yeah. So I rotate into my thigh and then I have this big pant leg crease. In the yeah. downswing, we're trying to actually open everything up on the left side. So I'm actually trying to open my hip. Okay. Th think again, forget golf for a second, think baseball. Yeah. A, a pitcher, the, the kinematic sequence of throwing a ball has a lot of similarities. So what are you doing when you're throwing a ball? I'm, tr I'm instantly opening up my pelvis, mm -hmm. right? I'm doing the opposite. Mm -hmm. so I'm opening, I'm externally rotating my legs, the first thing I do, which opens my pelvis. Yeah. And then as I pivot, I'm keeping that pelvis open, and then I rotate into it, into like the follow through. But at that point, it's already gone. But during the transition in golf, it's the same thing. If we were stepping, we'd go this way, open the pelvis, and then post up, and then you'd see that crease. Mm -hmm. But during the transition, I want you to think more opening. Okay. Because that's going to get your leg to move and open up in the pelvis. Okay. Yeah. Too much knee. Yeah, good, good catch. Yep, exactly right there. So opening without doing that. Exactly. Is... It's just too much. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Good. Okay. The movement really once you get. Get it wrapped. Get your head wrapped around what your low left side's doing. It's really very little movement. I mean, you're only going from here to there. I mean, it's so little. Yeah. But it takes a minute because we're using the left side of our body. Like, how often do you do anything with your left leg? And like, like yeah. soccer player left yeah. leg. You just don't have that coordination yet, right? Taller through the knees. There you go.
Let your hip, let's go back to that. Yeah. Just want to make sure you get a bigger hip turn going back. A okay. fuller hip yeah. turn. Yeah. Your arms are kind of taking over a little bit. One more time. Feels like I'm going that way. That's what I saw there, yeah. Right. Instead of. Not so much back. I think, again, sitting more weight more pressure onto the right side okay. where your left foot feels light. Yeah. If you feel that you're doing that reverse hip shift, yeah. where's the weight? Yeah, it's going left. That's exactly. what, that's what, but that's what it feels like when I, if I turn wrong, it feels like I'm going that way. Exactly. So my right leg's I'm pushing this way. Exactly. So think again, I'm going to lift my left foot up. There you go. Well, as soon as you forget golf for a second and you just try to move like you're going to throw something, yeah. you, send, you tend to shift your weight more naturally and athletically. You're gonna let your hips move, you're gonna let your hips rotate, you're gonna let them shift. So don't be afraid to feel more weight on that right leg. I mean, if anything, you could exaggerate that. That's yeah. not gonna kill you right now, right? Mm -hmm. so, and I actually, most tour pros are between 75 and 85% of the right side at the top. Yeah. Most amateurs don't quite get that far over. Right. I'm on the high, I'm at 85%. Okay. On every swing, I get oh, that much weight. I can almost lift my left foot up. Mm -hmm. So. Don't be afraid to feel like the vast majority of your weight's on that right side. Okay. Letting yourself turn and get your weight over there. You go. Okay. Again? Is that okay? Is that it was good, but you let your head move a little bit. Yeah. Want to watch those two together. Yeah. Okay. Okay, go back to the dress. Yeah, my head's going. Yeah, exactly. Well, part of that's because you're starting to creep back into no axis tone. Yeah. So there you go. Yep. Yep, right there. There you go. Right there. Now shift your weight to the right. Shift your hips to the right. There you go. As you're letting them turn. There you go. Perfect. Okay. So if you don't have any axis tilt and you get a little right side dominant. Yeah. Gotta make a big move to get over there. Then your head's gotta move a lot, right? Yeah. You set up right, then it's a lot easier to just make this feel not so, you know, such a huge, huge movement. Yeah. So not quite so much. There you go. Okay, go to the top. Get your knee coming in a little. There you go. Good. There you go. Okay. So that's, you know, that much head movement. Which is normal. Yeah, because I started with my head in a better spot. Exactly. Reason. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. it's just setup is so critical because all of a sudden we start chasing things that aren't flaws in the swing. Like, oh, well, how do I get over here? I got to move my head six inches. Well, you head start with a four inches. Over. Same thing. Like if you're trying to maintain your touch line, but you're setting up like this, it's, it's not going to work. So setup is critical to make all these movements really, really small. That's yeah. why axis tilt is probably the most underrated, underappreciated part of the swing. Axis tilt sets the plane. It sets weight and it sets your head position, which is the most important part of the swing. That's where your noggin is, right? Where your eyes are processing everything. If yeah. your head's moving all over the place, the ball might as well be moving all over the place. Mm -hmm. so, but it has to move a little bit as you get set up properly and let your weight move. It's going to move a little bit. It needs to, but it just it shouldn't move four or five inches. Yeah. Good. Your head movement was perfect. Yep, yeah, good, good, really good. Lower body looks great. And your left leg's right over the left foot. So that's cheating a little bit. But a little bit, that's okay. And at some point, you know, that right leg can get involved. As long as this side's steering the show, Yeah. just like the right arm. As long as the left lot, left side's steering the show, then the right side can help add speed. That's what it does. It accelerates everything. Yeah. But if you're going to use your right leg to help accelerate this left side movement, yeah. then your hands better be moving faster too. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to block it off the planet or snipe hook it. Mm -hmm. So that's why you got to be careful about adding the right side into it. It, it does add speed for sure, yeah. but it can't be driving on the show because then all of a sudden the left side breaks down and nothing works right and you're out of timing and sequence. Okay. Good. Starting to feel.
feel a little better about the hands coming down and the hip left hip goes. It looks like you're not you're no longer keeping your hands way up there and your shoulders open like your hands are. I'm not sure down. my shoulders are staying closed enough, but at least it feels a little bit more normal to have the hands coming down. It feels really weird when you're chunking it to try and keep your shoulders back because yeah. your shoulders are getting moved aggressively by your hips mm -hmm. and your hips are moving at almost the speed that you'd be making a golf swing, right? Because mm -hmm. they don't move crazy fast. So if your hips are moving at normal swing speed then your shoulders are going to be moving at normal swing speed, and you have to stop them yeah. to chunk it. Yeah. And they want to keep going, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's normal to feel a little bit wonky when the, the speed of it. Good. plane was really good coming down there. So now you're getting the arms to work. The club, the plane is coming down completely different. Take one quick look at that one. I kind of like the left foot on that one. A little squatty again. Right before you go back, you kind of squat into it a little bit. Pretty good lower body turn there, right though. In that thumb, maybe. Yeah, you could use a little bit more. Let it, all you need to do is let the left knee come in another half inch. Mm -hmm. But then as you come down, this is dramatically better. Before, if we put the other one up, let's do when well, we actually hit a ball because we did the same thing. So look at your lower body. This is when you actually hit a ball. Mm -hmm. Your lower body is doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, look at your left knee. Mm -hmm. Look at the difference in the, I mean, that's too much. That's almost getting over the top, right? But yeah. again, because we're not moving at speed, things are going to be a little wonky. But the plane and path would be dramatically different. In fact, that club's going to come down right on top of the ball. You actually dropped it back. Kind of reroute it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Get back there. Oh, this doesn't feel natural. <laughs> yeah. There's no way that could be right. I mean, it's pretty exactly. like, close. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If the shoulders would normally be. At this point, your, sh your hips would be a smidge more open and your shoulders would be a smidge more closed. Okay. And that would drop the club on plane, right? Yeah. But the only way that that's going to happen is for you to have the transition to where your hips are way ahead, mm -hmm. your shoulders are still actually going back. Mm -hmm. That creates that big separation, mm -hmm. which gets them a little bit more closed mm -hmm. coming down. And so when you're breaking it into chunks like this, that would actually be more normal to be in that position because it would feel really funky to keep your shoulders like way, way closed yep. while you're doing these drills and moving really slow. It just wouldn't feel right. So that's actually normal-ish. Okay. Um, so so where I want the club, I'm looking at this, I want it on that. I yeah. want it on the right arm. Yeah, it's going to go right through your forearm, right? Never down. This is where you're used to coming in. Yeah. Um, but as you're, but that's when you were rerouting it with your hands. Yeah. If, if you don't do anything with your arms and hands at all, and you focus on your lower body and getting just your hands to move back down, yeah. that club's gonna go right through your forearm every single time, which is on the plane. Okay. And then it's gonna go right through your hands yeah. and then right on top of the ball. Okay. So we went through, when you say forearm, through the right you went forearm. that one? Yeah, it'd be through your right forearm. Yep. So where's the shaft? So the sh I can't tell if you're saying the shaft needs to be. It'd be here. But this is going to happen completely automatically. Yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. trying to, if I'm looking at it in slow motion. So yeah. You want it right through there. Yeah, exactly. So it's going to, once it gets to there, it's yeah. going to basically stay on that plane. Okay. All the way down onto the ball. Okay. Whereas before, yours drops under. Yeah, it's under. And then you save it, right? Yeah. So, does all this make sense? Yeah. So let's recap real quick. First of all, taller through setup. Mm -hmm. Really, really important for a million different reasons. Right. But if you, the taller you feel, it's going to feel strange at first, yeah. but that's going to help. Second thing, when you get axis tilt, make sure it's just a little hip bump and your upper body moves back proportionate. What you tended to do a little bit was get really stacked on this left side, mm -hmm. and then you really want to get like this, and you know this isn't right now, so you get back like here, but your weight is still more on the left side than the right. 
So get 50-50 first and then just a little hip bump and let your head fall back. And yeah. You should feel more 50-50-ish. It's okay to feel a little bit biased on the left side, but okay. just don't get too crazy yeah. down there. Second thing, as you're going back, like you can use that little trick to kind of yeah. use this to pivot everything and just get your hips awake. Because right now, during the in your real swing, your hips do nothing, and then we got the arms going. This just kind of is like a great little cheat to mm -hmm. wake up the lower body. Yeah. Letting this left knee come in, but again, it's letting it come in, not trying to move it. If you try to move it, then you will move it. Too, much. too late. Right. Yeah, it's okay to go right away. Like the first thing, lift this heel. Yeah. These are going together, right? And yeah. This would be another exaggeration if you really find that you can't get out of it, you know, really locking this leg in mm -hmm. place. You can plant the right and lift the left. That's a big exaggeration. We don't need to do that in a real swing because that will really let you over rotate your hips. Right. That's the opposite problem you have right, right now, right? right? So that, letting this straighten up a little bit, again, perfectly okay. And then the big move, the downswing stuff is right. everything, right? Yeah. So this is all just getting that going. So the left knee kind of sitting into it, so you're getting everything going back this way. Yeah. While your hands are, later on, yeah. while your hands are doing yeah. this. And then that move is what's going to, this move as you squat into it and push up, is what's gonna release the club at the bottom. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Any questions? We cover a lot of ground. Yeah, we cover a lot of ground. But this is some homework stuff. Right. So this is you know, several weeks, months of work kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. But this, this addresses everything that you're struggling with. Yeah. No lower body movement, loss of power, coming way too far from inside. Yeah. We didn't try to fix your plane and fix your body. That fixes the plane. Right. Thing, so. Yeah, cool. Make sense? 100%. All right, sir. No questions? I have one question for you. Lay it on me. So I want to know if this... I wonder if, if this grip, if this is a sign of a problem. Yes, it is. So these are real soft. Mm -hmm. I've got it on my driver too. So if I had all, if I had these on all my clubs, they would all be that. Mm -hmm. What is that? So typically, it's obviously means you just put yes, pressure the on the thumb, thumb right? Yeah. But so you probably wear out your gloves there or something yeah. there as well. Yeah. You're doing so much with your hands uh -huh. because your lower body's not doing anything. Yeah. So you have to you have to grip the club tight because you don't have all your source of power. Is from your arms. Yeah. Right now, that stuff's gonna stay like that until you start powering it with your trunk and your core, and then your hands relax. But if you don't move your, I mean, your lower body literally wasn't moving at all on the downswing. Right. So what's moving the club? And literally nothing but your arms and hands. So yeah. you've got to grip tight. You've got to push against the shaft with your thumb because yeah. it's just an effort to try and move the club quickly. So my normal grip is really light. Yeah. I mean, if you you could take this right away from me, right? Yeah. But at some point, I feel like it's getting it there. At the top, kind of, mm -hmm. and and then it's the transition. I'm, then I'm holding on. So grip pressure for everybody, no matter how light we feel like we're grabbing the club, yeah. goes like this throughout the entire golf swing. Yeah, it's it can be super soft at a dress, yeah. and it peaks at about 85 to 90 percent maximum grip pressure during the transition for everybody. Okay, because you got to change the direction of the club. Yeah. So no hold matter on. like I hold the club stupidly light, right? Yeah. Let it fall out of my hands. Mm -hmm. My grip pressure goes like 90% at the top because it's going this way and it's got a lot of mass and momentum and inertia, yeah. and then you gotta switch. Everybody does that. Yeah. So the trick is holding it in the last three fingers right. is what's gonna allow the club to pull. That's not gonna feel natural right now if you don't use your lower body because you're not gonna feel like you have enough power unless you push. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So pushing feels powerful in the swing and it does add power. However, pulling is what's gonna allow you to leverage create leverage in the swing and use leverage to release the club yeah. properly. So your grips are all going to wear out like that. Yeah, they always have. Until you get this going. Okay. And once this goes on, then you're going to realize, gosh, I can just barely hold on the club with the last three fingers and pull yeah. this left arm, left left lat, as it's working in conjunction with the left hip. Yeah. And all of that stuff changes. Okay. So the, you'll see that change over time okay. as you get more comfortable putting these two key pieces together. All right, one more question. All right, yeah, as many Sorry, as you I want. Said, no, I said no. one, but I have actually had two. As many as you want. So it's the it's the length of the swing, at the top. Okay. Getting way back here, right? Uh -huh. um, I don't know if it's from. So it seems to me like you ought to be about here with the same wedge or something like that, mm -hmm. more or less. Yeah. And mine's here, right? Yeah. Sometimes laid off. It's all arms and hands. That's the only thing you're using to move the club. Right? Yeah. So I don't know if I'm. Relaxing that, possible. I don't know if it's my right arm getting collapsing too much, possible. But I, and I know we didn't work on it today, and I'm not asking to. I think it's probably not the time. But what should I be doing when I see this? 
to. So you're doing that in a response to needing a something power. to feel power yeah. and speed, right? Yeah. So, so no matter what, until we replace, yeah, because it's it's giving you more leverage, it right? Me, it gives me the ability to, to push that. against the shaft with yeah. your thumb, yeah. right? Exactly. Yeah. So everything that we tend to do in the swing, almost every single mistake, is in response to feeling power. Uh -huh. Nobody wants to powder puff their driver 100 yards. Otherwise, we'd all make perfect golf swings, right? Yeah. We all want to hit as far as we can. And so every mistake that we make is an association of trying to hit the ball as hard as we can. Right. And that's exactly so that, what you're doing. I think it's that, right? It just yeah. letting that happen. As soon as you let that cup, you feel, as soon as you let your left wrist cup, you get a lot more angle sure. to your left, left yeah. wrist. If your wrist is bowed, you can barely cock it at all. Correct. Right? So all of your speed is coming from you slinging it. Yeah. Right. So the more that you add angles, wrist angle to your swing, the more speed you feel you have in your yeah. swing. Right? So it's just again response to all these other little things that are yeah. going on in your swing right. that are causing you to do that stuff. Okay. So as soon as you so don't this, don't don't sweat that too much. Don't right change now. any of that. Don't worry about your arm movement. Yeah. Worry about your lower body movement. Okay. And then once that's working correctly, you'll find that you'll be much more comfortable making a more compact swing using less wrist movement, less arm movement. Mm -hmm because you feel like you've got more power coming from someplace else. Yeah. But right now, when you combine the two, you'll sleep, like we saw earlier, when you were making, when we were just focusing on your backswing, that's when the club got parallel or even across the line at the top, Yeah. because we were making really good turns. And yeah. then we added something, and then the focus goes away a little bit from that, and it goes onto this, and then all of a sudden it starts getting a little more laid off, and that's just the, the brain, we just can't process that much crap, right? So as you do this, things are gonna evolve and change, and you'll start to find that you can feel more compact, shorter, yeah. all that stuff. Because when I try to go back with a flat wrist, um, I feel like the I feel like the club's super. I feel like the club's closed. Yeah. Because this feels natural to me. And that's really open. Yeah. Right? yeah. But again, you you're looking at all these things. I look at all of these things you're describing. I'm like, oh, that's a compensation. Yeah. That's a convinced story move for that. That's a convinced story move for this, and so on and so forth. Right. Right. So you feeling like the face that this is cupped. Yeah opens the face, that's a Hogan move, right? Yeah. What did Hogan do that for? He hooked the shit out Like the hook, right? Yeah. So that's all you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're doing the same stuff, you're coming away from the inside, and to fix your plane and path, we had to fix your body movement. Yeah. But instead, you're like, well, I'm not gonna fix my body movement, I'm gonna just fix the club face, which is an effective fix, right? right. If a face is open, it's hard to hook it. Yeah. But that's all you're doing, that's why this is cupped and it feels good to you. Right. Because you can't hook it like, or you have a really hard time hooking it. Like that. And then you, <laughs> I then you it. combine and still hold on to it, right? Yeah, I like, that's oh, not enough. I got to put. I well, look, Hogan's book should have been called "How to Stop Hooking It for the Rest of Your Life." Yeah. That's all it was. Was every single move. I look at Hogan's swing, and I've talked about his swing, and I, I love Hogan. I'm a huge Hogan fan. Yeah. I love. But all his swing was was how to stop hooking it. Uh -huh. When you're like this at impact, and you're driving super hard off your lower body, your arms are going to get stuck. Yeah. And then you swing flat going back on top of that, your arms are even more stuck. Yeah. So you preset them stuck, and then you drive hard to get them extra stuck. Yeah. The club wants to zinc. When you, the more you swing from the inside, the more momentum there is on the toe of the club. You can't fight that. Physics are always going to win. So the more shallow I come at the ball, yeah. the more the toe wants to close down. Yeah. So instead of fixing that stuff, he's like, I'm just going to put one band in on top. Because he had to dig it out of the dirt. And I, the best thing Hogan ever said, I think, was later in life, he he got interviewed, maybe it was by, I don't remember who it was, but it was like in the 80s or something like that. Yeah. And he said, if I had video, I would have never lost. And he's right, because he understood how to get the ball to do what he wanted, uh -huh. but once he saw his swing on video, the first time, he's like, that's not me. Just like everybody else, <laughs> exactly. there's no way that's, that's me. Like, it's your clothes, it's your hat. <laughs> yeah. It's you. Your voice, yeah. But everybody thinks that, and yeah. that because we rely on feel. Yeah. And then you, you know, you're just chasing your tail. And right. this video and the mirrors, it, you can see everything that's going on. This stuff isn't rocket science. Yeah. And so all the stuff you're going on, all the stuff you're doing in a swing, yeah. we all just build these compensations. And if you're sitting there trying to dig your swing out of the dirt, you're just digging yourself a hole. You're digging yourself a grave. Right. You can fix this stuff way faster yeah. just by video. So cool. Okay. Makes sense? Oh, yeah. All righty.